What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the Sea Stories Podcast. My name is Adam, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Andy, Drew, Joe, and Josh. And today, we will, we will be telling sea stories with veteran and former Navy sailor Chuck Astin. Um, he's going to be telling the stories from his time serving in the U.S. Navy. What are sea stories? Sea stories are exaggerated tales told among sailors, usually around some pints of beer. To honor that tradition, we'd like to tell our own these stories over beers chosen by our guests. Today's theme is laggers. And if you stick around <laughs> till the end of the show, laggers. we'll give you a mini mm-hmm. beer review. Once again, my name is Adam, and today I am drinking from Stone Brewing the uh, Buena Vesa Salt and Lime Lager Sick Can Art. Never had it. Popping it open for the first time. Ooh. And I can't wait to review at the end. Andy, it's been a while, dude. How have you been and what are you drinking? I've been good. You know me, I'm uh, you know, busy doing everything and anything. Uh today I'm drinking uh the Armed Forces Brewing Company, uh Cat Shot, an American lager. Uh they recently took over the old O'Connor's brewing here in Norfolk. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good so far, and we'll talk more about it later. Drew, good to see you, brother. Love that shirt. How you been? Thank you, thank you. We'll uh, talk about that shirt later for sure. Um, listen, man, I'm doing great. Um, glad to see you all. I'm drinking the 1300 Mile Brewing uh, beer from the Lakeland Brew Hub. Uh, this lager, uh, pretty excited to drink it. All right, man. What's up, Joe? What's in, what's new with you? What are you drinking? What are you doing? Thank you, Drew. Um, like I said, uh, my name is Joe, and I was a FC three on the dog cook with all these guys. Uh, and today, I'm drinking. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I mean, I, it's Beer. Casey Beer <laughs> Company, but it could be uh, maybe Hell's or Healy's or Hellas. I'm, I'm going to go with Hellas. I've already said Hellas. Hellas. Okay. Mm. I figured it wasn't Healy's. Like you have to drink drink it while you're like zipping around town on your shoes. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a Munich style uh, golden lager out of Kansas City. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get deeper into it later, I guess. Uh, but uh, feeling good, man. Feeling good to be back in, back in the seat. Uh, and uh, last but not least, Josh, how you doing, brother? Back in the seat or back in the saddle, maybe would be better. Back in the saddle again. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm on uh, summer break myself, and so when I got, you know, when I finally caught up on the text messages, I decided to go with the logger that I had in the fridge, which was, uh, <laughs> you know, Corona Extra. So that is a Mexican logger, believe it or not. I think that's the the proper name for it. Um. I don't know how educated everybody is or how educated everybody wants to be, but a lager is definitely brewed differently or fermented differently than an ale. So those are your big, that's a big branch in the beer, you know, lager and ale anyways. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story. I should, we should talk afterwards, but anyways, well, for you, uh, for you guys that can't see the chat, uh, so, Joe asks if Josh has has his ear pierced, and he does. <laughs> I had to put some bling in there for the wedding, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Wait, Josh, you getting married? As yeah, yeah, uh, in November. <laughs> Congrats, man. <laughs> well, you know, we we've been kind of dating for like what sixteen, fifteen years, so it's been All a right. long time, <laughs> a long time right, coming. So- yeah, I'll send y'all an invite. I mean, if you want to come, come on, man. You know, no big deal. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, but as unexciting as my beer is, our guest is so much more exciting. And I'm excited, and I know I think all of us are really excited to have him because I haven't I haven't seen this guy in a long time. But uh we served with him on the Donald Cook, and I want to introduce to you Mr. Chuck Aston. Chuck, what you drinking tonight, man? Man, so hi everybody. So I am drinking New Realm 
New Realms Brewing Company, Blackberry Smoke. Hold on, do the hand thing again. There you go. Oh. So, Perfect. it's uh, Blackberry Smoke is a local rock band here in Atlanta, and they they paired with New Realm, and it, they they've got a pretty solid lager. I mean, I, I would much rather drink this, but I've got 18 gal 16 gallons of my own beer in the fridge outside. And I usually brew like a Mexican lager or Hellas style beer. Or I, I try to go with Kolsch as well. Uh, every now and then I'll brew an IPA, but I always try to go back to the, the simple, you know, you got to brew it perfect because it's simple so, ingredients. So uh, lagers, Hellas, and, and Kolsch are my, my styles. That's awesome. I started well, a little I brewery back, uh, back here at the house. Um, to make rum and uh damn andy your head your head turned awfully quick on that one <laughs> and, uh, I, I do the rum and i make uh make beer politically incorrect brewing nice it's awesome that blackberry smoke they have a really awesome song called a uh, good one coming on right yep they sing about shiner beer and everything else all that fun stuff you should I'm check it out. To be honest, oh, y'all should check it out. It's a really good, it's a really good beer. It's a really good uh, song to to listen to on a Friday afternoon. The, the New Realm did like a whole uh, brew series. They have another beer that's uh, what's it's called Tour Bus. I got the the label on my beer fridge out there. Out there. Sweet. I have to awesome. Look some of those up the next time I go. We have New Realm out here. Virginia Beach, so well up there again. Yeah, definitely looking forward to you uh, chatting with you, Chuck. Uh, but before we get started, uh, why don't you give everybody like the quickest Navy bio? Oh, uh, joined the Navy April April of '01. Uh, AECF program, you know, all of us I think we're in that program. Um, mm -hmm. You know, did did boot, did time up in great mistakes. Um, you know, went through the through the old the old what NIDA courses we called it, and uh, Tech Core. I remember then, those. Um, you know, I left I left there I think in January or February of o two, and um, shortly after you know moved to Dahlgren, and that's where Andy and I met. Yep. And, uh, you know, Andy and I were in uh, uh, Aegis Computer School together. Yeah. And I actually, I started out as a display tech. And then I started when I was working holds, you know, for the first couple of weeks there, I, um, I, you know, I was like, hey, what's the what's the best school to go to? And everybody said computer. So I went and talked to the lieutenant. And he he swapped me from display to computer only to learn, you know, later on that, you um, yeah, you, you spend time in the same damn room. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, anyway, Andy, Andy and I got to be real good friends. We had the Mason-Dixon Line Exchange Program, we called <laughs> it. He would take me to Cleveland. I'd bring him down to Georgia. <laughs> and um, How long yeah. did you serve? Uh, I did uh, six. Six years. I, I was I almost, almost re-enlisted. Okay. And then we all met on the don the good old Don Cook. Yep. Um, so before we get officially started with your interview, I got a little ranking segment. And in honor of you, Chuck, we will be ranking uh Navy small arms. Oh, are are we going from the small arms from when we were in or, or current? Oh yeah, from when we were in. Okay. Uh hold on, let me figure out how to share my screen. I'm gonna they change the small arms? Or is that like a joke? Yeah, because like, they have small, they curly arms. Somebody's cousin got reelected to somewhere that owns a you know arm. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna change it, you know. And uh, the like the sixteens or Mark eighteens that we have, they're moving to a new round. It's almost like uh, I think somebody said it's like almost like a six point five creed more right. round. And uh, hmm. yeah. Um, I also changed the ranking structure to make it more aligned with the Navy. So we're at the top. We got our EP ranking. Um, then we got MPP, UD, which is un sending them sending their assets to undesignated, and then we got SP, significant problems. Uh, Andy, why don't you kick it off? We got the uh, M500, the M14, the M9, the M16, and the good old 50 cal. Uh, let's pick the 
tried and true M9. The uh, which I believe we used the ninety two Golf in the Navy. I think Uh, was it ninety? Yeah, it was ninety two something. SF That one's or pretty Golf? close to it. Whatever that Yeah, one I think is. it's a. I think it's a ninety two Golf because I have a Beretta that's a ninety two F, and it it was slightly different from uh, the one in the Navy, but it's like such a minor difference. But anyways, Should have sneaked one of those off the Donald Cook, man. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, they definitely don't keep track of those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have a story. I know people that, you know, They just thumb down there with those Mustang jackets, dude. It's just like, yeah, you know. or night vision goggles or any, anything else that's gone missing. The RD All right. three fifty eight tapes we threw over the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, Any, any memories? What are we ranking? What you got? yeah. Um, I mean, the, the like I remember. Well, part of the reason I bought my Beretta was because I remember like. you know, training days and stuff like that on the Mastex or anything else like that, like learning how to, you know, break it down all the way. So like, it's easy to take apart, put back together and clean up if you actually clean your guns. Uh, some people believe in cleaning them all the time. Some people don't, but you know, works great. Um, you know, for normal safety and everything else like that. Easy to shoot. Uh, I remember shooting qualifying sharpshooter the first time and then later shot expert so i mean i was pretty good with it uh, i would liked it you know uh preferred when we went to the drop leg holsters over the old uh hip you know waist belt holster yeah you know? good old uh you know internal rover or petty officer the watch once we got rid of internal rover finally you went like john mcclain holsters yeah <laughs> You're going to take a poop with one of those belts on all that holsters. stuff on there. Yeah. Shoot your, your fucking, fucking face off. That thing hits the ground hard enough. <laughs> what, are we ranking it? what are we ranking at? I'm going to put it um, <laughs> MP. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a classic gun, but it, you know, it's not like at the same time, nothing special, but can't go too wrong. So MP, I feel. Uh, Chuck, why don't you go next? What What do you want to rank this thing at? Oh, man. Ah, I mean, shoot, it, it's kind of old reliable from the ship, but if it doesn't fire, you could use it as a boomerang, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, after, after doing so many qualifications on the range and stuff like that, and having the CSs come out, the SKs, and all everybody else on the ship, you know, you worry about shooting the lights and getting shot yourself. <laughs> I would... You know, ease of use, for, you know, for the CSs, I would say, you know, probably MP. Uh, you know, would I own one? I've got a SIG. I, I, I love that thing. You know, um, I'd probably put it a P, you know, give it give it a good, you know, got MP and UD. I'd give it the middle ground P. Uh, Drew. So I do not like this gun. <clears throat> uh, not a big fan of it. Um I, I just it didn't feel good in my hands. I thought it was like a little heavy. Uh, I know, I mean, it's reliable and that's kind of what it's for, you know, to be reliable just in case, like Chuck was saying, the CS is like drop it and fucking shoot the lights out. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> I'm, I was never really a big fan of this gun. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a undesignated. Uh, Joe. Super reliable gun. Uh, like I had said earlier, I dropped it a thousand times <laughs> and, and I still trusted it with my life. Uh, so, uh, but uh, as far as everything else goes, it's, uh, you know, it's just a handgun, man. And it sits on your hip and it's something you have to walk around with a lot. So, uh, you know, you get a P. Promotable. Josh. All right. I don't know. I liked it. Full metal gun. I didn't. I carried the other one, the, the rifle, a little bit more. But um, yeah, internal rover. That was a fun job. Yeah, I do remember doing that a lot. We carried that in a couple of magazines, didn't we? Yep. Where would yeah, I rank I it? I like it. I like a full metal gun, man. I, I'm shit, man. Put that up there with MP, man. Most promote. I would most promote the nine millimeter, man. 
Um, and then as far as myself, uh, yeah, I don't like it. Uh, I'm a Glock guy myself. Um, it was pretty reliable, but it, it was pretty heavy on the same time. I do remember, you know, going down the TER on the internal rover days and, you know, practicing my quick draw just in case. Would you really? No. Oh. <laughs> Fuck you, Osama. <laughs> I'm gonna pull my gun. <laughs> you never know when you're gonna be in a, a uh, you know, under siege scenario. Under siege could, scenario. There could be yeah. intruders in the spy room, in the spy rooms and stuff. Um, but with all that being said, yeah, I definitely give it a, a UD, a, a undesignated. So I think uh, consensus yeah. would put it around a a P. Yeah. I was rooting for you, man. I was rooting. For you. <laughs> Hey, Chuck, why don't you pick the next uh, weapon system? Oh, man. So it's a toss-up between the 14 and is it is, – hold on. Wait a second. I can't say it's a toss-up. Is it? Are we talking about the dual 50 cal or that's just single 50 cal? <laughs> uh, just a single. We'll do a single. Okay, because that was a – you know, the dual, fi- the dual 50 was just such a pain in the ass just to mount itself. Uh, so, um, man, uh, I'm going to have to go with the 50, man, the Browning. Awesome. Uh, if you got any other thoughts, if not, give us your ranking. Ah, so, you know, was it 50 cows as old as my grandmother, basically, or my great (laughs) grandfather or whatnot? I would say EP. This is just a golden gun. Uh, You know, the best thing about it, I can't tell you how many uh, links and rounds I, I picked up. And when I got off the ship, I, I would just give them out to my dad at the time and use them as pen holders, like, like a, a bundle of them that would stick yeah. together and he would have it on his desk. And I don't know. That was just a fun gun, to sh- just super simple to take care of uh, besides the headspace and timing, which, you know, honestly, I don't think I've ever had one not pass headspace and timing. So, uh, damn, I haven't said that in a while. Uh, <laughs> so... Oh. Yeah, I, I would lot. say yeah, it's definitely an EP. Definitely an EP. Uh, Drew. Um, I mean, I definitely didn't put as many rounds through this gun as as Chuck did. Um, but this gun was amazingly fun to shoot. And where the hell else are you gonna shoot this gun ever? Like, you know, uh, I would give it an EP. It's fucking badass, and like, holy shit, it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Joe like Rambo on that thing or something. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna have to go EP. I mean, I think that honestly, I probably have more appendages than I've shot rounds through this gun. <laughs> right, so, I mean, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think that they even like they were like, five and you're qualified. Like, thanks, dude. Like, I, I'm, I'm great, but uh, <clears throat> the watch was fucking terrible. The watch was. Miserable. Awful, <laughs> yeah, horrible watch, man. Uh, Suez Canal watch, but you you only stay in the watch what during the Suez or like during the know? hottest time of the year. Yeah, it, it's yeah, great, yeah, of course. Right, uh, like, <laughs> some port watches, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Terrible, terrible fucking watch. But uh, Drew hit the nail on the head. You, you you never you'll never do it again. Uh, you know you got to do the EP. Super reliable gun, and it, yeah, and, it, and the probably like honestly maybe 20 rounds, 25 rounds I've shot through this thing in my entire life. They were all fun. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, watch sucks, though. Josh? Yeah, I don't know how I, I end up shooting. I mean, just a very few. I don't know if I got stuck in some kind of like <laughs> trying to like qualify for some watch standing. I imagine they probably forced me into or something, but I was actually able to shoot this one time, but now I was always, you know, it's just an intimidating looking weapon, especially when it's mounted on a ship because it has that big, big giant uh, armor plate in front of it. So it's well, like American gladiator shield. Yeah. So you're kind of protected, you know, you're not just like holding this thing. And then of course you don't have to carry it. Of course, you know, that thing would be like, God knows how much weight, but it just pivots on that thing. I mean, you can shoot. It's crazy. And it's just like a dual trigger system. If anybody's ever seen one or nobody's ever seen one. So it's wild. Yeah. 
Well, uh, man, yeah, I guess I have to agree with everybody. I mean, definitely something you don't get to shoot in the civilian world for sure. But um, yeah, I'll do an early promote. I'll do an EP. Andy. Yeah, it's got to be EP. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we definitely didn't get to shoot it enough. Uh, yeah, it was like five or 25. I think it was 25 rounds through it. And like five round bursts was the, the qualification shoot for it um i didn't mind the watch because we didn't have to row so like <laughs> kind of sit there maybe sit on the bit or something right by it or whatever where the mount was depending on where you were uh hopefully you're close to the smoke deck yeah so <laughs> no, i mean i didn't smoke but it didn't matter but it was nice to not have to walk around carrying a weapon like you just chill out yeah maybe you had to wear the black vest or whatever but you know again i didn't have to walk around so that was not too bad plus you'd end up you know killing time with the topside rover anyways so um it's a classic it's cool like anytime you see yeah something you know like world war ii footage you know modern you know anything anytime you get to see like you know where you're doing a you know crew mounted weapon like this in a video game or something you're like i've actually done that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah this is definitely the the combat systems weapons you know specialty like if you're in that department you're standing this watch on the depl- on deployment um i still remember standing and we, we were doing six hour watches on this thing while everybody was doing normal watches four or five hours or whatever it was but i remember standing in we were, we were uh visiting some one of the countries in north africa in the middle of summer man it was so goddamn hot up there Ooh. standing this watch I'm pretty sure I didn't have the flak jacket or the battle helmet on. I was like, North if Africa. I go, I go, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm actually going to give it an MP. But I think the consensus is pretty much EP. Is it because of the uh, work associated with it? Like the that, you know. and I got another weapon system up here that I treasure okay. more. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, <laughs> Drew, why don't you pick the next one? Cool. I am going to go M14. Solid choice. So um, I'm going to kick this off, which I <laughs> I do love this weapon. I think it's freaking, uh, I mean, speak about classic. You know, this is probably like two grandmas, great grandma age uh, weapon here. Um, but it is... I, I really I, I loved shooting this. It uh it was accurate. It shoots a seven six two. Uh, it can be fully auto, which I've never shot it personally fully auto. Um, and this is like the most badass gun in fucking Black Hawk Down. You know <laughs> that Seal dude he has it with the scope, and he's just like one shotting everyone. You know it's it's a fucking great weapon. It's a badass weapon, and it's classic. The watch sucked, but I'm not rating the watch on this one. I'm going to give it an EP. (laughs) Joe. Yeah, it is a really awesome weapon, dude. A lot of of history in there. I just can't get over how shitty that watch was. (laughs) You know, The, the way that it grinds into your shoulder the the way that the your your back is sweatier where that gun sits right at, and it and it soaks through your utility shirt. I remember the good times though too when I got to wear it with short sleeve utility shirts. So that was <laughs> excellent during the summer. <laughs> it was a gun that you could easily forget into a ba- in a bathroom on a midnight watch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you yeah. know, I'll tell you, I, I'll, I'll I'll give it a P. You know, like yeah, I mean, the reliability of it versus the, I mean, if I'm, I guess if I'm just rating the weapon, yeah, I mean, but I mean, the, oh, I can't get over that watch shit, man. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get, now nah, give that thing a UD. Damn. You're going to deck semen school, dude. <clears throat> Be lighter. <laughs> Josh. I stood a lot of that watch too. Out on the end of the pier. That long that was the gun that you would take on the end of the pier to stay and watch out there at that pier, the the water side. 
<laughs> that hurricane watch. Yeah, yeah. They'll keep you out there till that hurricane comes, I'll guarantee. I, I sat out there one time. That was rough. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Anyways, um, yeah. I remember this remember we get we it'd get to rain and we'd put condoms on the <laughs> on the muzzle of the back on the muzzle there. Just to be silly. Um yeah. You know, you definitely have to switch shoulders. You'd have to work one shoulder for one hour and then switch another shoulder to another <laughs> hour, you know. <laughs> but if you got lucky and it was co you know, cool or cold, you know, you'd have that Mustang jacket and you could throw it on there and Yeah, I don't know why they never got any like they should have had some like better harnesses for those things. You know what I mean? As far as long as we had to carry those things around. They should at least let us track them across our chest like the army or something does. Because or... <laughs> that was just old school. It was just a single strap. Mm -hmm. It was like know, the, the cheapest top way to the bottom. Like... And, Did anyone uh, buy one of these when they got out of the out of the Navy? No. I've been Maybe. thinking about it recently. Are they expensive? I don't know. I'm, you know. I would I would figure they would not be that expensive. I just remember what, when you had that thing Dude. cocked back, you could bump that you could bump the stock and that summit would just, you know, in the main, that slide would go forward. Oh, yeah. It was like a hair, I wouldn't say hair trigger, but it was like a, whatever that receiver was, that was just like barely holding that thing open, you know. But yeah, uh, dude, I'm going to go with the, I like that little gun, dude. That thing was cool as shit. Shot those big ass bullets. You felt like you were like a sniper in the Navy or something. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going with the MP, man. Can I have more than one cat? Yeah. Okay. I'm cool. Yeah. Andy? Must promote. Yeah. Um, For me, it's got to be a, it's going to be a P right in the middle. It's a <laughs> classic. It works. You could count on it. You know, it wasn't going to let you down. I wasn't the best shot with it. Um, But, you know, I knew I could do what I needed to with it. It had the range, you know, 762 full metal jack, but you can't go too wrong. You got to stop and power the range and everything. Um, but that watch, you know, and as often as we were on that watch, it just, it took, it sucked the and life like, out. I know, know, like, and, and we would take the watch, but did everybody ever check the sights to see if those were even like aligned? <laughs> like, if you had to use it, would it even shoot straight? You know what I mean? But we check the sights when we qualified with it. <laughs> they were so banged up. I mean, you know, that by the time you, you stood a watch with one, there was no way that. Now, uh, did that just... have a full auto switch yeah. on it? Yeah, it did. Oh, shit. Okay, that's why I got. Uh, if anybody said that you ever fired at full auto, it was just gonna be like a kid trying to shoot a full auto gun. It would just trail up or down or whatever <laughs> because it was so hard to control in full auto. But so my uncle Sam, he he taught me about uh, how to shoot at full auto. You know, he was around during Korea War and Vietnam and World War Two. His uh, buds, you know, seal and whatnot. He was he told me he was like, you got to drop the sling onto the ground for, from the from the back side of the stock and drop it on the ground, stand on it. Stand on it? Oh. Yeah, even for the Thompson, he said you'd have to stand on it just to shoot it full auto. Yeah. What are you ranking this thing, Chuck? Oh, man. Oh, so this was this was the the one that was a toss-up, man, and whether it's a 50 cal or I wanted to talk about the M14 first. This was definitely a, uh, an EP for me. This is an amazing gun. Yeah, I mean, you know, civilian models and uh, the SOCOM versions and all that stuff, they went with that uh, fully synthetic stock. But, you know, this wood stock, wal was it walnut, I believe? Uh, absolutely great gun. It comes with my Coyote. Um, but, yeah, man, you know, that 7.62 round, loving putting down range. Um, well, the 308, you know, civilian models, we want to call it. Oh, not 308. Yeah, 308. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just a just a good gun overall. I'm a that's that's my EP, definitely my EP right there with the 50 cal. That's why you know it's like a toss up to talk about it first. The 50 cal was you know if we wanted to talk about it, if I want to talk about it, it would have been the dual 50 would have would have dropped it down into the P position because I hated that mount. <laughs> but um, the M14 is is definitely an EP for me. I wish I wish we would have kept it around.
Yeah, um, this is my EP as well. And like, imagine my surprise when I show up on in the fleet and I'm standing topside rover and they hand me this fucking what sixteen pound rifle. <laughs> uh, absolutely love it. Um, I'm a big old Call of Duty nerd, and you know, give me the M14, give me the M1 every single time, the M1 carbine. They're all same family, but uh, yeah, EP for me. Oops. <laughs> um, I think it's in between EP and MP. Slightly before the fifty cal. Uh, who's next? Joe. Uh, let's just do the uh, M sixteen. <clears throat> I don't know. Does anybody want to get started? Uh, you, or, you, you. Oh, oh, me, me. Um, yeah, you're, you're the one that's going to start. We didn't carry this on the ship. Uh, did, uh, there we did. I never shot that. Eventually, we did. Eventually. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. We uh, we, I only remember staying stuff. to watch with the M14, but yeah, uh, I did stay to watch with the... for BBSS stuff during our second deployment. Yeah. And then, you know, okay. after we left, it's like they came up with this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I did stand uh, watch with the M16s when I was in uh, Connecticut. <laughs> We didn't. We had M16s versus M14s, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, man. You feel like such a fucking hard ass when you're 19, 20 <laughs> years old, and you're uh, walking around like a, 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 it's and it's also a school base, and you also just got out of school. Like we we just left uh, Great Lakes, <clears throat> so uh, you know, and we went to another school command with a bunch of you know nerdy kids and shit that were there for the submarine school and we were walking around with those things on our chests <laughs> you know feeling cool wearing camouflage uh it also was the also the worst rover watch you could have for sure <laughs> so <laughs> funny how that translates uh i liked it man i thought it was, it was, it was kind of, i don't know anything about it to be honest with you but uh yeah, I thought it was it was cool, man. Give that thing a P. I don't know too much else about it. It's plastic, so I'm assuming you can probably not as reliable. <laughs> uh, Josh, man, I never shot one of them things, but they look cool as shit. Uh, I still like that M14 a lot better, man. We'll just keep it simple. I'm going to put it over there on undesignated or UD. What is that? What it was down Yeah, for? yeah. Remote, must remote, undesignated. I, I, created, I created UD just to add oh. one more. Oh, okay. Here. Yeah, I'm going to put it down there in that color. That uh, color, right? I don't, I don't like it. It don't look navy. It's not navy enough. It needs <laughs> a harpoon on it or something like that. <laughs> Andy? <laughs> Yeah, I'll give it a P. Um, I mean, it was, as far as roving, it was a, a great improvement over the 14. You had that, we had like the three-point sling or whatever the hell. So, like, you could have it draped across the front of you. But also, I purposely didn't go to to the M16 qual shoot so I could try and get out of staying at a fucking <laughs> topside rover. And then they put me on the watch. I'm like, I never shot this guy. And they're like, Ah, hell, you're good. You know what the hell you're doing. Just fucking wind showed me, like, here, you just do this and this, and that's how you clear the weapon and make sure you're good. Fuck, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I think we switched over, like, when we got back from the 06 deployment or what, 0506 deployment or somewhere in there. And I was like, you know, should have been getting out because the PRT instruction had changed. And of course, that didn't happen either because they fucked me there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, good gun, but uh, just didn't pan out for me. Uh, so. Chuck. I'm so used to teams. teams. Boom, come in here. I knew buttons. Yeah. Ah, fuck. Ah, M16. So, you know, the funny thing is, is Every time my daughter had a boyfriend come over, you know, I'd always ask them, you know, hey, what does AR stand for? And the AR-15, they always had assault rifle. And <laughs> get out of my house. 
<laughs> and uh, you know, that was always my comeback. And even my kids said that the other day. And I was like, damn, I failed as a father. <laughs> but, um, the M16. So, you know, when I was on the ship, we had the Mark 18s. And, um, you know, that's the, the 10 and a half inch upper. And, you know, had the uh, little uh, collapsible stock on it. And I have two upstairs, I'll, I, not 18s, but uh, custom ARs that I've built and whatnot. And I, I love them. I absolutely love them. You know, the size of the round, you know, if you're hunting with them, I try not to use more than a five uh, five round mag. Um, unless, we're, unless we're hunting uh, dogs or something like that. But, you know, for the for the Navy, I'd say the M16 is probably too long. Uh, too long for uh, shipboard combat stuff like that. You know where we're navigating peeways and things. So I, I would definitely drop it, drop it down to the UD, UD or SPE position. You know I would say you know safely between those two. Uh, yeah, the Mark Eight, the Mark Fourteen is longer, but I'm pretty sure we could have come up with a shorter version for for standard shipboard use than you know in our our time we were in than the uh, M16. So I, I got to drop it down just to do the size around made of plastic. Um, yeah, I got to drop it. Uh, Drew. Um, so I didn't really uh, shoot this gun very often um, because, yeah, I never I wasn't in when we even had it on the ship. Um, so I shot it mostly like uh, after the Navy. But I uh, I think I would do it at a. I'd rate it at a, uh, it, it is cool looking, right? Like it is badass looking and it's the quintessential, like when people think of like rifle right now in the military, I think that's what they, they probably assume. I'll give it a P. I want to give it a UD, but I'll just give it a P. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like I have a couple of AR-15s myself. Um, I'm, uh, I'm in line right there with you, Chuck. I think it's too long. I like the shorter barrels, um, even aesthetically. Like, I don't like the full stock. I don't like the hand guard. I don't, I don't even like the handle um, sight. So, it, like, aesthetically, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the 16. Um, but, yes, you know, when you think of U.S. military, you think of the M16. So I'll, I'll give it a P as well. And uh, I think collectively we'll do a P. Uh, and uh, last but not least, the shotgun. Oh uh, man, the Josh. Mossberg. Mossberg. Yep. I like that little thing, dude. I actually, uh, that thing was cool. It was a cool little gun. It was perfect. <laughs> it was be one of the you know if we had to do like an intruder in the ship, that would be one of those. Ones that you would get. Um, it was kind of short muzzled. It wasn't like a traditional shotgun, like, you know, for shooting birds or <laughs> clay or it didn't have like a, you know, six inch barrel. It, you know, it has a small little barrel. Um, I like that little thing, man. It was made in America, simple, easy to take apart, easy to put back together. Um, what do you mean? I'm gonna put it with the MPs, man. The must promote. I don't, do they still use those? Oh, they have switched sure. as you might know. Uh, Andy. Yeah, MP. Uh, yeah, you can't go wrong. The classic pump action 12 gauge shotgun. Was it like six or eight in the tube? You know, you would have the. Uh, you know, we'd have it on the sling. It wasn't too heavy, and plus you had the little like. Uh, you had some of the other shells, I think, on like a little, not really a bandolier, but on the uh, on the stock or whatever, on a you know thing there. So you had all the rounds you needed or whatever. It was good. It it looked cool. It wasn't too heavy. It was a good time. Sure, it was only like five rounds shot at the water to fall on it, but it's a shotgun. It's fun. MP. Chuck. Oh man, the Mossberg, you know, <laughs> you get kickbacks from this from Browning or uh, Springfield or Mossberg. <laughs> so I gotta say, this is a this is a great gun. Um, you know, it was one of the I can't say the first twelve gauge I learned how to take apart, but absolutely amazing pump action. Um, you know, my dad has uh, it's not the Browning. 
uh, he's got the, I think Smith and Wesson, whatnot, but took it apart with the boys the other day. And it was, you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass to put back together. I was, I was wishing it was a Mossberg 500 just for ease, <laughs> you know, is, is it a bird hunting gun or anything like that? I mean, you know, you, you want to put a slug down range or something like that. Still, still a really good gun. I absolutely love it. I, I agree. It, it's definitely an MP gun. Good home defense, man. If you need something for home defense, it's not it, unreasonably priced. You kill your neighbor for, you know, knocking on your door at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> for a cup of sugar. That's the gun you want. Well, you know, put some bird shot in there and just, you know, turn him into Swiss cheese. Rock salt. <laughs> Rock salt in there. <laughs> Agree? I mean, it's it's a shotgun. Uh, it's a fun gun to shoot. It's cool. It makes a loud noise and, you know. But how do, you know, maybe I've had a couple of beers, but do we ever think about, like, shooting this inside of a ship, inside of a steel ship? Like, what yeah, the it would have been, been fucking great. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> wouldn't like all was in front of you, you could have been, you, I don't know, you could have been a blind kid on the ship <laughs> right, and just well, shot the fucking shotgun in the direction of Osama bin Laden and he would have been <laughs> torn the fuck up. Well, yeah, right, but like the the ship is made of steel. Like, aren't you like shooting essentially a bunch of pellets into a steel fucking tube? Yeah, what, what, what was the load that we use? We would, uh, would we, uh, yeah, we, we load buckshot, buckshot or we load slugs? I think we load buckshot, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. And you know, going through VBS, that's probably inside of a fucking shoot it at ship. the deck. And, you know, yeah. You know, Blackwater guys, they were like shoot it at the deck because that way to ricochet and like travel flat like 12 inches mm. off the deck or off the wall it was really neat crazy yeah yeah see that's what i'm saying like and we didn't really think about that at the time i guess but anyway it's a fucking shotgun uh ep man it's a fun gun it's intimidating too uh joe Got that sweet heat shield on it dude I, I man this wasn't my first shotgun to shoot either you know uh i had the, the new england you know, when I was a kid, you bought a Walmart, uh, and <laughs> they, uh, my favorite way to shoot it when we did the, at the range time was, uh, from the hip. It always made me feel like I was like, you know, in a fucking like sweet cowboy movie or something, but, uh, it's a shotgun man and it's super fun and MP all day. Anybody can shoot it. I, it's probably, it's probably should be the gun that everybody got trained on versus the fucking, uh, Nine millimeter, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it, if the CSs or whoever's going to be on watch doing, you know, doing whatever anyway, give them something that they don't really have to try that hard to shoot. And it wasn't like shotgun qualifications, like poor CS shoot. is getting called out all episode. Uh, <laughs> so what, watch, what watch stood the, with the shotgun? Do you remember? No, no, um, no, no. I stood it. I I was I had this gun when we were pier side or on the pier in Oman where we, we had no backup uh -huh. from the country and we were providing our own security. Yeah. It was me and an unarmed guy at, um, they stop, they stack connex boxes. So the trucks I do remember the pier and drive around mm -hmm. and I was at the end of the connex entry point with the shotgun. I remember having it, uh, in the rib at MHI too. Yeah. The only reason I think uh, CSs are getting called out is uh, due to uh, the fact that, you know, they didn't stand watch. <laughs> and so they never got gun qualified. And some That's of them true. were like, we want to shoot the guns, too, and get qualified, you know? And it was like, and then, like, it was, like, floated, like, you know, well, maybe in porn, like, CSs can have, like, or some fucking nonsense. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, the 9 millimeter shit, dude, pull that thing out, just fucking, like, start waving it around like crazy. <laughs> I mean, it can, be, it can get very dangerous inside the skin of a ship. But I think the shotgun, you know, if you did, like unqualified people just like, you know, walking around shooting that thing at bad guys, no sweat. Um, I'm also going to give it an MP. And I just want to say, like, out of all these guns, like, if you want to talk about feeling like a badass, combat loading a shotgun is one of the coolest things. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you do it today to like show your friends what's up? What's up? Like, hey, right. Ever, <laughs> I, I, dude, I, I've done it multiple times. Like, hanging out with <laughs> this like, out. Dude, shooting clays or something and <laughs> pop one in combat style like oh, and then they all do the same thing like, oh fucking you know 
Um, just to review really quick, uh, at the top we got the 50 cal, followed by the M14, followed by the shotgun, and then we kind of had the M9 and the M16 tied at P. Um, awesome, that was fun, you guys. Thank you again. Uh, Drew, why don't you take it away? Let's get started. Hell yeah, Chuck. Good to see you, man. I'm I'm glad you're here. I'm sure we all are. Um, I am. Uh, sorry, say again. I'm ugly on the big screen. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to start with uh, your your pre Navy stuff, and I'm going to kick it off to Andy for boot camp. Um, so, where mm. are you from, man? Where are you born? So, I am born and raised in Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, actually, the hospital I was born in is now a depot. <laughs> and, <Man. laughs> uh, you know, parents moved out uh, to Carrollton, Georgia back in after I graduated high school in 2000. And I promised my parents I would get the farm ready uh, before I left for the Navy. You know, kind of, you know, building paddocks and sheds and just kind of making sure everybody's happy and whatnot. Spending a lot of time on the tractor before we got out, you know. Uh, the farm we we raised horses uh so i grew up showing and breaking horses awesome um so uh, uh what were you like in high school you know besides uh doing all the farm stuff did you do any sports uh any kind of like hobbies other than uh you know the farm life So I played freshman and senior year uh, football, and it was mainly so I had access to the weight room. <laughs> well, I probably have a crappy connection. Um, I had access to the weight room, but I grew up, you know, besides, you know, being on the farm, I played soccer and I took karate in my younger days and, and you know, normal kid stuff. Uh, absolutely love soccer. Hate watching it. <laughs> Damn. Hate watching soccer. Hate is a strong word. Yeah, you yeah, seem very yeah. passionate about that. U UGA football all the way, man. All right, all right. Um, so as a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Did you did you think you were going to just be working on the farm, doing that kind of thing, or did you did you have other? You so, know? Uh, you know, my mom took me to a couple different places looking for a new horse after my horse that I won the world on got really hurt. I've got five international championships and a world record showing horses. That's, wow. uh, and, you know, my mom took me to a couple places and she's, I, I just did not see myself doing that. But at the same time, my grandfather was living in the apartment down at the barn. Uh, we had a pretty good, uh, we had 200 acres and whatnot. And the, the, uh, the old barn, you know, I had a full apartment that my parents lived in while their house was being built and uh, my grandfather lived there after, after he got divorced and, and uh, I would go down there daily and, you know, in the mornings I would just listen to, you know, World War II and Korea war stories. And, you know, same with my uncles and my dad. And I, you know, probably from a very early age, I decided, I was like, I'm just going to join the military so I can share this with, with my kids, you know, they're probably not as broken as I used to be. Not my kids, but my uh, my aunt and uncle. Oh, my, my aunt and uncle, but my grandfather and uncle um, and my dad and all that. I just, I feel, you know, I'm a little bit, I don't know, maybe being a sailor, maybe maybe broken a little bit more than than most. I feel like they're, you know, a little bit more put together. Cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> did you... Uh... Well, when you were joining, when you were, uh, you know, uh, uh, looking for a recruiter, did you know you were going Navy? Did you look at any other branches, anything like that? So I looked at Marines. My uncle used to, you know, tell a story about being a Marine. And he was during Desert Storm. And then my dad was Air Force uh, combat air crew. You know, and I went down to Warner Robins and, and shared, you know, he's, he shared a few of his stories down there, which was really cool. And, you know, my mom, she always said that if she would have joined, she would have joined the Navy. And, uh, and you know, I got, I, I got the wheel turning. And I was like, I don't have any, any family members that I know of that are in the Navy. It's like my grandfather retired, you know, Army Air Corps. You know, my uncle was in the, uh, in the Marines. My dad was in the Air Force. I've got a cousin, you know, she, she's younger than me, but, you know, she was in the Army too. And I was like, well, you know, 
I get seasick. What the hell? Let's join the Navy. <laughs> did you ever? <laughs> oh, yeah. So what did your family think when you were like, I'm going to join the Navy? Uh, <laughs> so the biggest uh, negative response I got, I got was from my grandfather uh, from the Army Air Corps, World War II, Korea. And he was like, I didn't fight in two wars just to see my you know, grandchild join the military. No. And, you know, this is this is all before September, September 11th. And, um, uh, you know, but, you know, he, he was OK with it. He just, you know, that was his response. My dad was, you know, his response was get all the education you can, you know, become a crypto tech. You'll go through a year of schooling. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that, that's for the Air Force. And, you know, mom responded, well, that's what I would have joined. <laughs> OK, well, let's go with the Navy. And that, you know, I grew, I grew up showing horses and traveling. So I was like, well, I like to travel. I like to go places. I don't want to be stuck on a base. I grew up like an hour from Benning. And uh, I don't want to be stuck somewhere like that. It's just hateful. So let's just be on something that goes somewhere. I just want to interject for a moment. Uh, Chuck and I work together now. And uh, he doesn't do my job. He's a, he's the man now. But like, uh, yeah, everybody always tells me because I travel a lot. He's like, if you want to know where to eat or where to drink, just hit up Chuck. He he looks like knows all the spots around the United States. <laughs> yeah, I keep getting being. I, 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 you know, they always tell me to write a book. I'm I'm getting there. I just don't. <laughs> you know, I don't. I love to eat. I love to drink. So <laughs> everywhere has got great places. Everywhere. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll um, even say, Joe, Joe, you guys have good barbecue. Can you see barbecue, partner? I agree. <laughs> it ain't no North Carolina, but it's close. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, I mean, are, are we talking Carolina vinegar or Carolina gold? Vinegar. It, it's good barbecue, mm. but I'm a Carolina gold fan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the interviews over. Yeah, <laughs> fuck this guy. <laughs> Kids, man. Well, I mean, I think Casey has the best barbecue, so I'll just I'll, I'll leave that there, man. dude. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I mean, Texas has some good. I mean, really, barbecue is just fucking barbecue good. Barbecue is just all around good. You can't you can't? It's all good. It's all good, man. This is really smoked is. meat. I mean, the toppings is what makes a difference. You know what you're putting on it. Like I love. I love the North Carolina style with like coleslaw on top of the barbecue, you know, in a sandwich. Oh, that's so good. And pulled pork. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Oof. I think we're all hungry. Do we yeah, all eat right. fucking dinner? Man, I, I <laughs> Let's wrap this up. Um all right. <laughs> Back to the interview. Um so when you went to the recruiter, how did you decide to become, well, I mean, tech core? How did you decide on tech core? And did you consider any other uh, rates? Hell no. <laughs> my uh, my recruiter was an FC2, and he was a C-Wiz. Oh, and I, I was like, what do you do? And he, you know, he talked, and I was like, my dad recommended crypto tech. And, you know, I, I, I kind of saw his eyebrows <laughs> change. Crypto-tech eyes glaze over and he was like nah you don't want to do that he's like come in here take this pre asvab test and um took the test and he goes oh you're you're gonna be an fc all right all right uh the hell's that he goes, bias. Blow, he's like you're gonna get to blow shit up if, if they let you okay i'm sold <laughs> so, you know they're on out i was like my trajectory was like i'm going that direction you know i was like i'm gonna be a c list tech and then I learned what CWS techs do, and I was like, no, there's not enough time in the air conditioning for me. <laughs> I mean, shit, I, you know, honestly, I was coming to the Navy, so I didn't have to work on the farm. So, right? you know, yeah. coming to the Navy was like a vacation. I was like, I'm getting educated, <laughs> paid. I was like, all right, we're good. Nice. Uh, I'm going to kick it over to Andy for uh, you going to boot camp. Yeah. Yeah. So, he went to boot camp in April, you said he went in? Yeah, I think we were like, what, a month apart or something like that? Well, I got there in July, so. Oh, that means I'm you graduate high school. We graduated in 2000. 
You graduated. Yeah, I graduated in two thousand. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, I thought yeah, you were. I, I thought I spent you spent a year to get the farm. I spent like a year to get the farm ready and to determine you know, what I really wanted to do. Yeah. Understandable. Get that, and you also got your senior summer, bro. Yeah, dude, awesome. Some of these some of these knuckleheads leave like right after high school. Like, what's the point of fucking doing twelve years? Just immediately do this. No, nope. took half a summer. You know. Not for me, bro. <laughs> I'm joining September 11th, 2001. Yeah. <laughs> Andy's, coming in, <laughs> Andy's coming in like I'm going to be the next John Cena of the Navy. Yeah. Joined on Friday the 13th because I'm a real man. <laughs> <laughs> real dumb man. <laughs> anyway. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I mean, you got there in April, so it was starting to thaw out. Um, and that's Chicago. great weather to probably be in boot camp. That's probably <laughs> that depends on the how the winter was because you know you can get late snow sometimes up you know carry north. over. But anyway, um, what kind of you know boot camp wise did anything stand out? Like, what was your main takeaway or what stood out to you from boot camp? You know, I, I would say boot camp was like for any one of us. Uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't like APOC or ARPOC or whatever they were called. Okay. I tried not to stand out in the division. I tried not to stand out as the ship, but I always told the ship that I was part of their duty. And then I always told the division I was always part of theirs. So I got to sleep through every night. I never had to watch <laughs> it at boot camp. So uh, it was kind of nice getting Dang. through that. Boot camp was boot camp was easy, you know, three you meals a, a day. I think I gained 25 pounds in boot camp. I think I joined at like a buck twenty-five and then <laughs> boot camp at a buck fifty. They fatten you up, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that you know you weren't used to eating three meals, three meals a day. A day. Yeah. yeah. Right. Not on the farm, you're not eating three meals a day. I mean eating a big breakfast and then like eating a big dinner, and that's about it. Yep. We need you out here throwing lines in the Navy, man. You can't be weighing 125. <laughs> no, give this kid two chicken cordon blues. <laughs> <laughs> Best meal we have, by, by the way. Uh, we in our, kindergarten our division or do you integrate it or <laughs> do what? Were you all male division or integrated or what? So we had an all male division. Okay. Uh, you know, my division was all male, but the one directly across the hall was like one of the, you know, one of the integrated divisions in the, the USS Bonham Richard was our, my ship, you know, the one at the very end of uh, boot camp. So we had, you know, like a half mile to march anywhere, you know. Yeah. Nobody have can shout march. Out, sh- sh- have a it's shout out to the USS Shiloh where I was, I was at. Nah, Bonhomme Richard, baby, what's up? Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> Anybody else out there that was... Um, you guys probably jerked off in the same stall. <laughs> in the USS hope so. Kylo during boot camp. Man, let us know. That'd be awesome to know. I'm going to have to go look at like my whatever picture book or you don't something. Remember? You don't remember, remember man? Too, right I, do, I, I don't remember. The Sullivans? No, I just made that up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah. So then, yeah, we took the the long, grueling bus ride across the street to serve a school command. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, I know. This is one we always ask. Do you remember your first meal outside of boot camp? Oh, probably uh, like I Liberty Weekend or whatever. We're staying on our graduation. Can... Yeah, I can't remember the first meal, but I can remember like two meals. You know, first was my mom and dad came up for like after boot camp. And so th- this had to be actually be my first meal out of boot camp. So it had to be Outback. Yeah. And I remember going to Outback and, you know, I sat there and I was like overwhelmed with emotion. <laughs> I didn't really know how to like, my parents are sitting across from me. I'm like on the north side of Chicago. I'm in a concrete hell. You know, nothing what I grew up in. Yeah. So yeah. I, it used to take me almost an hour, you know, 30 minutes to just to walk across the property. 
And I can remember actually, you know, ordering my steak rare. I've always eaten it rare. And I actually, I, I remember crying. I wasn't happy. I wasn't sad. I just like, just happy that I, I guess I had a rare steak. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you were overwhelmed by awesome from the blossom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The awesome blossom was amazing as well, as well. I learned how to make that sauce the other day, so oh. my kids are spoiled now. Game Hell over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. You know, I think that it, it's funny when we ask uh, people like what their what their first meal was like outside of the Navy or whatever, and it's always like roughly like the same like Cheney style restaurant, you know. Um. And that's because we didn't have the internet. Yeah. Is that, is that, is you know, like, there's no way our parents really would have taken us to, like, I don't know, Outback Steakhouse or, like, the Rainforest the fucking, Cafe. The Rainforest, you know, like, all that all that nonsense that, you know, if, if they would have had, like, I don't know, Yelp or something, we probably would have gotten, like, deep dish pizza. <laughs> Just saying, we were pretty close, pretty close to Chicago. Yeah. They must have had a deep dish place somewhere in the suburbs. Yeah, yeah. MapQuest um, on their phone, dude. They had to MapQuest the house on dial-up. They had to print it out. Yeah, <laughs> I remember my parents print out. MapQuest and how to get from Carrollton, Georgia, to Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> Did they drive they, that whole way. They they thir- they printed out like thirteen pages. Yeah, yeah. Dude, my dad just wrote it on a piece of notebook paper. He <laughs> wasn't about to pay the <laughs> printing fees. <laughs> the um, you remember parents getting flew. the baby ball cap? Uh, from finishing battle stations at from that uh, moment. The the black navy ball cap with the gold yeah. embroidery. Yeah, that Josh is currently wearing. Yeah. I think that thing lasted to the next command and I threw it in the trash can. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it was an absolute terrible ball cap. Oh, uh, was. How about terrible. the emotions for no, no sentimental value out. whatsoever? <laughs> I would like pull the plastic strings out of it and it would like slowly collapse into like an actual ball cap. That's a Um, first for the show, to be honest with you. uh, I don't know. Are you an android? I think you're a robot. I mean, he he worked on a farm. He's used to like not having attachments, right? To like animals and stuff. And good quality stuff. He got these ball caps where they're nice and flimsy. And then, hold on, hold on. Got red caps there. I somewhere. have the brand new oh, Donald man. Cook after Rota ball cap. Oh, that's kind of sick. Oh, I like that. Bowl? How'd uh, you get that, it's, dude? It's got a bull on the side. Oh, uh, I can't see the bull. Put it in front I'm of your face. Oh, God, for a second there, yeah. I'm trying to give it a handy. Give me a second. Put it in front of your <laughs> face. Oh, there there it is. oh, there you go. Yeah. And for those of you that are just listening, uh, he's showing us. The new Donald Cook ball cap, command ball cap. It's tan. It's uh, sharp. Somehow it's decent like that way tan. with it not being fitted. Oh, it's got that settle check DC. That's very, that's a nice looking uh, ball cap. It's tan, seeing... has the DC on the front. On the right side, it has a bull. And on the left side, it has, yeah. what, what's on the other side? How did you, how did you get so, that? The, 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 uh, so anybody remember? The, don't uh, tread on me flag on the other side. Yeah. Anybody remember SK2 Leonardo? Yeah. 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 So he's, he's a good friend. And uh, I promised him some homemade whiskey or rum uh, for a couple ball caps. So my boys, I actually, I get three at a time. I get, you know, two for the boys, one for myself. I've got an, uh, I've got a, uh, was it FP, F- FPTT hat, the green ones? Yeah. Got yeah. that one. I've got the I got the OG from you know 2003 before Settle Check got their hat. Yeah, I got mine. Got, so. you know, a couple of the, the blue DC hats. And I got a CST I stole a CSTT hat. <laughs> Acquired. Yeah. <laughs> Acquired. But uh yeah, so then Tech Core, you were not a guy. Um but you remember when we finished Tech Core, and then we we're all in that big room, uh, did you get to pick ETFC, or did you get luck out on the lottery? Did you do a back alley trade, you know, with somebody? It, it was almost a back alley trade, but um, that's how you caught up to me. 
Yeah. Actually, I got kicked out of uh, FC school. And how did I do that? I was a smart ass. And uh, Conrad was there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you guys have talked to Conrad before. Correct. Right. 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 And, oh, fuck. Uh, Conrad was there. He actually wasn't wasn't one of my uh, class teachers or whatnot, but um, he. Yeah, I, I just remember he was one of the the night the one of the instructors there, and I was like, man, I, I want to get in his class. But you know, before I got to that class, I, I think I mouthed off, and they were like, just get out, get in the holes. And I mouthed off because they you know, they're like, you need to take one page of notes for every ten pages that you read of homework. And I was, you know, they said something when I got there in notes. They were like, this is not enough notes. You know, you need to take college ruled notes. And I was like, well, I took a couple college classes. Six less than six months ago, and this is how they wanted me to take take notes. So I, it was a senior chief that I was mouthing off to, and he was like, "Just get out!" And uh, there was a lieutenant down below, and he was a Mustang, and he was, you know, down below, you know, on the first yeah, first deck there, that the schoolhouse. And um, the lieutenant that was over the top, he goes, I like what you told him. We're going to put you right back in class. So it was like <laughs> you know, three weeks later that uh, he put me in class. Uh -huh. And I was able to, you know, pick almost back up where I started. So I had like the hardest time with servos and you know, the servo motors and DC motors and stuff like yeah. that. that class yeah, the like, locks were a little bit tough. Then, uh, once it came to picking C school, did you have any preference? I mean, I'm sure there was probably a couple of C with some age disorders, maybe a five inch or two. Man, you know, since I, I'd been in holds and whatnot, I kind of came in the very middle and we didn't have much to pick from. So I was like, well, the dog run's close. It's quick to drive home at the time. And I was like, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just go to dog run. <laughs> I'll just go to dog. Do you, do you remember <laughs> where you famous in last like words? Order of. Do you remember what where you were at in the order? I was in the dumb order. You know, somewhere. <laughs> okay, you were okay, dude. Yeah, me and you, man. I can, I get it. Oh yeah, I know what it's like hanging out down there at the bottom. I, I was doing my best. I was doing at the I was at the middle, the bottom of the middle. Yeah. No, you were you were right there with me, Joe. That's why we all ended up on the cook. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, we were <laughs> like the Navy. We were still FC, so we were still smart. We were just like yeah. medium. Yeah. Smart. Oh, man, you know? dude. Or like the low, low end of smart. Yeah. What do you call a doctor that graduated last in his class? Yeah. Doctor. 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 Yeah. yeah. And we were like the and it, all right. I'm not even going to how cool we were as FCs, but uh Yeah, way cooler than doctors. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're gonna have Fucking our first nerd. uh C stories head call. Uh but yeah, I was just saying in the meantime, uh we want to hear from you. Uh, we know you're listening, and uh, now this is your opportunity to reach out to us. Uh, if you went through similar experiences, if you have beer recommendations, you know we're into the drinking beers on this on the podcast. Um, if you want to be a guest, or if you serve with us and you want to say hi, uh, we, yeah, we want to hear from you. Uh, email us at cstoriespod at gmail.com. That's S-E-A-S-T-O-R-I-E-S-P-O-D at gmail.com. Uh, Drew, you want to add? It's just us two right now. You want to add yeah. anything to that? Uh, I I like that. Uh, you know, we know you're listening. We look at the the statistics, the analytics, the analytics. We know you're listening. Uh, no, but um, you know, like Adam said, uh, if you have any beer recommendations or um, you know, any kind of recommendations for uh, maybe a topic for the podcast that we don't you know uh, hit on that maybe you want to hear more about, let us know. Uh, we are definitely open to any uh, suggestions, comments, anything like that. Uh, but don't say anything bad. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, give us some ranking ratings too. Give us some five stars on whatever streaming platform you listen to. And it, hey, if you email us through the socials or email or whatever, uh, I might send you a couple stickers your way. I got some available. Um, yeah, so email us, reach out to us, and you might get some some swag. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Yeah, so uh, 
middle of the class, picked up orders to Dahlgren, and then uh, lo and behold, we crossed paths in, in holds there. If I remember uh, right. Was it uh, McGuire? But yeah. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to go out and burn one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gonna go out and burn hey why don't you come play some everquest with me or see how it's played yeah jesus <laughs> well, hey, I, I think he, I think he lived like a hundred yards away from the base in the base gate there at dahlgren yeah oh uh, yeah so we met in holds i don't even know if we realized or knew that we were in the same class yet or what but yeah but uh me and Mounds showed up together and hold everything, and uh, yeah, we're running to you, and then lo and behold, yeah, it was like half of the holds, the holds crew at the time. We were all in like the same class. It was like me, you, Mounds, Dice, yeah, um, and then McGuire. Yeah, we're all in holds. Yeah, he ended up becoming like the class leader or something, right? Yeah, he was kind of class leader, and then uh, we had Rao. FC two Rao was our class, uh, like the head he was guy. our class counselor, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rao, that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go ride bikes. All right, sure. <laughs> oh man, we had some time. That we had, we could do a whole podcast on some of the adventures we had in Dahlgren. <laughs> in fact, the other day. I was mentioning how we made the uh, the AM police reports. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go drive through some cornfields in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter if we took the the Ranger or not. Taking yeah. Andy's horse through the yeah. middle of the cornfield in wagon. the middle of the night, not knowing what you're going to hit because it's just corn. <laughs> That's fucking wild. The windshield. Yep. <laughs> Then we threw like oh then when we took with uh your truck the next time, then we threw a bunch of the corn stalks in the back of um what's it, Donnelly's truck or whatever. <laughs> Did they catch it because your vehicle was covered in like mud and corn? No, 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 they had no idea. They just it was uh, our <laughs> one of our um buddies from class that lived in uh was a colonial beach. Yeah, yeah. He was listening to like the AM police reports. Like, oh, the other uh, looking for some um, kids or whatever. They're making crop circles down over on the, the road. <laughs> no, it was on three hundred one or whatever. Yeah, I haven't thought about that. We didn't either. like we didn't drink in Dahlgren. We just did other stupid shit. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends. Did we swing through and see Miss Pam at Texas Roadhouse? Or no, was this it? was it after an Otani's. Like thirty dollars of sushi were just full of fish and rice. <laughs> was your place you got served underage? Was it uh Texas Roadhouse? Yeah. We'd get a picture of Amberbach and they would ID me and then we'd get all you know like five glasses. Right, yeah. Our place was Hooters. <laughs> a buddy of mine ended up marrying it. It's <laughs> <laughs> working there. Oh my god! Yeah. Like after after uh, he got out of sea school and get, got to the ship, he ended up coming back for her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, and we Andy and probably have lots of stories from Dogger. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah, we got a bunch. I mean, there's a lot of shit we did. We started the Mason Dixon Exchange Program, which you mentioned earlier, in which I uh, took Chuck up to. Cleveland area, Northeast Ohio, and he was uh, his own three ring circus. Everybody was like, oh, listen to how he talks. He talks all funny. <laughs> Greg, he used to crack me up. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you would, you crawled up on the roof <laughs> as we're driving down the middle of the street of the, of the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy's. You guys have where you spend, like, holidays together and shit without having to really take no we just drove uh, home on weekends like it was seven hours for me to drive from Dahlgren to home and it was god eight and a half nine for him to drive down to georgia but you know we just do it on a weekend night class so it's like we almost had a three-day weekend every weekend Uh, yeah 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 Yeah, when we switched over those night classes yeah it was definitely like that like as soon as you got off of 
to school at night, man. You just hit the fucking road. Yeah. The, the was best thing cool. about riding with Andy was um, uh, the Mr. T, Mr. T bobblehead that he had. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, the Taurus, the, the dash on the Taurus would change. It was you know, four between like 65 uh, and 70. Yeah. And so Mr. Had to speed Mr. T, up. it was like between 69 and 70, he just went to shit. And then 80, it would just like go like stone silent. <laughs> It was like yeah. free floating, Mr. T. And you weren't going to drive slower, so you were on the other end of the shake zone. You're going to put the floor pedal down to the floor. <laughs> yeah, I'd go down to Georgia. I remember the first time you took me down there. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to help you chop up wood. And I took a hand axe while you're running a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> so I could <laughs> chop through one fucking log that was like a big round as I was. I'm like, all right, I'm fucking hot because it's like 85 to 90 <laughs> degrees in Georgia in the summer. And I'm used to it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, that, I, I still I still tell stories of you chopping that wood, like standing on top of it like it's, you know, World Series chopping wood contest. Yeah, like I'm fucking lumberjack in the lumberjack yeah. games. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they chop in a minute. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, and then we decided when it came up for orders that we wanted to go to a ship together because we clearly hadn't gotten tired of each other yet <laughs> that, it was either that or our mom said so yeah we were the two <laughs> yeah yeah our parents made fast friends with each other too so yeah I had, we had uh southern and northern families respectively yep yeah, we decided if there were a pair of orders together, we wanted it to go. And that's how we went to the cook because we didn't feel like going to Japan and trying to learn Japanese. <laughs> Did you like threaten everybody else that was the pick before you? All right. yeah, it was kind of like <laughs> it was a weird thing where like everything just kind of works out, regardless of kind of how everybody wanted. Like the our buddy the like was top of the class, like he just wanted the newest ship. So he went to the Porter. Um, there was a pair for the cook and pair for um, the McCain in Japan. Um, then there was like a couple for the Lady Golf. That's where so McGuire. You had multiple double sets of orders? Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Like we had, yeah, we just kind of like no, out. I, no one's ever heard of that before, dude. You're acting yeah, like it's I'm a regular just... thing. Don't don't forget that. Uh... Like <laughs> like, it's, best, it's, like best friends could just go on the ship yeah, together. Like like if if you're thinking about joining the military, you think this happens, you're fucking mistaken. <laughs> you can even sign up for the buddy program, and it ain't fucking happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is nonsense is what it is the and only instance of it ever working and it wasn't really planned yeah, it wasn't and planned what you guys have like three or four sets of like yeah something like double that, orders yeah. yeah it was like yeah it was like three or four sets of double orders uh, we did any, but it was weird though like i think you guys had, just 69 all the way down the pier to the dolan yeah no shit yeah <laughs> well see the funny thing is though we took we both took orders to the cook but then we went to the cook separately. Yeah, it was weird. I through a day before him because somehow, like, uh, the orders we and had the to priority, break you, like, you two up somehow. It's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I, one of us was on like a higher priority because you know it was uh, because like Andy, you know Andy the original crew had turned that, over yeah. and left, so it was just Ramirez and Store in there. So they needed somebody. So I was like, I show up. And then we pulled into Roto. They're and like, who there. did better in class? Oh, let's get that guy over here. That guy over there. <laughs> great. Yeah. He can what tell us about the other guy coming. That, it was probably payback that time we had to take the, what was it, the RD test in the when the power was going out <laughs> over the course of the test. Remember that? I don't no, I don't remember. We were in that other room or something, and then like the lights were slowly getting dimmer and dimmer. Mister Man, what's, was what's the oh, RD test weird. for the non-Navy people and the tape drive? I think it was a tape drive. Yeah, it was a tape drive system, and like, 
was was that during that like hurricane or whatnot the storm we were having and like the backup generators were dying at the same time because you know yeah yeah, yeah that's so. what it was yeah we were in like one in like the in the newer side of the building or something there was this room that had like backup lights and we had a test that day so it was like we're taking the test and then like the lights slowly like dimming over time <laughs> but, like since it's a long test like you don't quite notice it that much and then we like everybody's the horrible <laughs> dying was like, was like uh, one of those when, when they do the, like, the final test of the whole thing or something like it takes yeah, it was like, like an hour it was like a third of the way through class oh. like you know it was kind of earlier on but it was like who finished ahead of the other in class was he andy were you before yeah Chuck andy was before me because how I'm far done. before him were you syllables. <laughs> i don't what well, plus like the other good thing was like they showed us they showed us the list like we went on a break and then like everybody kind of like i think we negotiated kind of what we wanted but yeah it was like it largely worked out like he there was like one San Diego, other guys, yeah. you know <laughs> yeah I don't think anybody was unhappy about where they were going. I think everybody, you know, we we all negotiated. Yeah, and I don't really. I'm so do scared that. I was going to go to Japan. <laughs> That's yeah, how well like, I was. Mostly returnees, so they went through their detailers. <laughs> you know, like it wasn't. Too but bad. we had that FC two in our class that was from uh, the the shitty kitty. Yep. And yeah. uh, remember, he spent his entire reenlistment bonus on. Uh, electric keyboards remember walking into his room that one time there's like yeah. nine electric keyboards surrounding his entire room yeah oh uh, that get, i'd like want to do a a podcast on how people spend their bonuses that'd be fun yeah. he, he bought a bunch of cool shit and like i remember borrowing some of it to like take samples of like his drum machine and everything else for all the music i was doing you know yeah, so i remember getting out. this like sample cd that he had made and oh yeah it's probably in one of those cornfields that we were driving through. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, we get to the ship, and that's where I hand it off. Wait a second, Andy. We, we go a little, there, there's, a, there's a side story there that I don't know if the four other individuals know. Yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> Tell but us. Andy and I got tattooed together. <laughs> same trailer oh yeah there's that do you, <laughs> you connect them when you put your forearms together it's the butt cheeks almost constantine you know <laughs> there is that because i i don't remember i think they, I think they like, both have hepatitis a and b as well. <laughs> My parents were like, oh, like, because when I first got it and they came down to visit me, I'm wearing a sleeveless shirt to go meet him outside the gate. Don't just so say, like, got it. You got to tell us. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, you got to show it. You got to share it. And I'm like, there's a trailer. I got the tattoo. They're like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Welcome to the Navy. <laughs> Pull it up, Andy. Let's see that. Let's yeah, see what, that sleeve. So what, God doing, it was a guy doing tattoos that I'd met somewhere. And I, oh, it was it was layered. That was it. He was in holds with me. Yeah, uh, him and I were working in holds at the gym at the time because it was after. So Andy and I had met, and then I was like, "Hey, there's a spot open up at the gym. I get to go work nights at the gym. Sure, I'll go play paddle ball or whatever. You know, a little bouncy thing. Come back with black eyes the next day. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that, "That's perfect duty for me." Mm -hmm. And then Layer got kicked out because he got in a. Uh, uh, motorcycle accident in Maine. It was like in a coma for two months. Oh yeah. And then, uh, but he had taught, he introduced me to that uh, tattoo guy. And I was like, Andy, let's go get tattoos together. And I was like, I'll draw your little FC tattoo. And Andy was like, No, I'll fucking draw it. And I was like, Okay, well, I'll draw mine then. And uh, that's where we got our that's, sit in a trailer right off right off of that little. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, we got through those tattoos. A good bit of business. Bonded yeah. for life. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> he was a, he was a really good artist. He just didn't like shops. So no. independent man. That, that's a good or thing. health codes. Yeah. <laughs> what about this trailer? Was like an RV thing. or something? It was a legit trailer, like on the on uh what was that two oh seven or something or whatever. I mean, if a tornado went through, it was it was the main target for there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, Joe, you want to bring us into fleet life? Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you, you didn't you didn't meet the ship in uh, Norfolk, man. You met it on the on that deployment, right? Yeah. So I'm, I met it. Uh, Andy was already there for a day, obviously. Yeah. And uh, you joined it. What 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 port did you uh, meet? Rota. So we pulled into Rota. Rota. I got on the ship. Then we had to go out because the Spanish Navy was doing like an exercise or something needed to pier space. So yeah, we go so out for like the day, and the next day we come and pick up Chuck. A- Andy and I got split up in, in holds to go to the ship, and I went to the Wisconsin. And I, I worked there for a couple of weeks, and then I guess he left, and I was like, where the fuck did Andy go? What would you and do in Wisconsin? Wisconsin? Do what? Did you do oh, the in USS Wisconsin? Wisconsin, right? Yeah, then the battleship over in Norfolk. Yeah. So I was like one of the last sailors to to the Wisconsin. So yeah. that was a legit thing. That was a legit yeah, thing. What? What, they, what yeah, they have yeah. you doing there? Yeah. Just honestly, <laughs> it was it was watching the yard birds go in and out of the thing to make sure it was like fully decommissioned or whatnot. And then it was just sweeping the standing water off the wooden deck. <laughs> it was glorious. It was the it was the best duty. What'd you wear? On a civilian clothes. Really nice. Yeah. and I, it was like you report at like nine o'clock in the morning, and you would sweep the water off the deck, and you were done by eleven. Was this an actual like duty? Like, did you have yeah, orders? Like, so so you dude. weren't like every morning coming on board, like no checking on board the USS Wisconsin, and, like pretending to be a fucking like real life person. You no, were just you, up there were... getting getting wiping shit off real quick, and then getting out before the tours started or something. Yeah, basically. So you would the only time they required you to be in uniform was your retirement, and you know they would have you you know do whatever during, you know on the outside of the rails for the retirement, welcome people. But I wasn't for for the two three weeks I was there. There was no retirements, <laughs> so it was Dang. like I just Makes show sense. up, sweep water off the deck, and then the yard birds would leave all of the hatches open. So I would just like walk through the ship, you know, just touring the the Wisconsin by myself. Nice, yeah, nice, two, nice. Two or three weeks of TPU holds waiting to figure out where they were going to have us meet up with the ship because it was like me, you, and Harvey. Yep. Kind of cool. Harvey went to the ship with me. And, uh, Andy, you, you weren't on the, on the ship with him, on the, on the Wisconsin with him. Where yeah, you? I, w- I went to some other build and whatever, like build maintenance. And they're like, oh, well, since you're a petty officer, you can be in charge of these couple deck seamen or whatever i'm like oh sweet my trail finally means something <laughs> <laughs> very nice very nice hey, all right never did that floor, bitches. <laughs> all right so so you, you meet the ship in road of spain man um, i'm assuming this is probably the second time you've seen a ship in real life uh because i'm assuming that you got to do one got to do a trip when you were in dogrin nope. uh, you, you, they didn't take you on a little trip down down to norfolk let you look at the ship you went down or something or we were gonna I don't know. Like it was weird. Like they I think, had. A... I think I went down to Yorktown to see a friend. Because <laughs> you went and met like a couple of them or something. Because you met Gibbs or something somehow, and I think I had something else going on, so I didn't go. So yeah, there was a couple other friends. I, I went down to Damneck one time um, from Dahlgren, but I never really stopped and saw our ship. I, I think I went down. I had a buddy there that was in uh, SM two school. I think at the time. Okay. Okay. And uh, he and there was also another ET friend of mine from uh, from uh, Waukegan that I, I stopped and saw, but I never actually went on base or anything like that. I was going to try to stay away from being seasick as far you know as much as possible. Yeah, all right. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, you get on the ship and you check in and. What is like Andy standing on the quarter deck with like weird like anime eyes or something like you're getting on the board and, <laughs> and you're like there it is home <laughs> and also I'm assuming maybe Ramirez was also on the on the quarter deck as well waiting your arrival. Oh, so checking into the ship was an experience. So Harvey and I got sent for the ship. Uh, I think she was Harvey was no S. Or started out as a CT oh, and converted right. into OS or something like that. And her and I, you know, got sent to the ship together, but we had no communication with the ship at all. They were like, here's your orders to fly to Madrid, catch a flight from Madrid to Juar- Juarez Fuentes or something like that, the airport right outside of Rota. 
And they were like, okay, that's it. That's all you got. So luckily there was a National Guard uh, married couple that was there. And they were like, oh, don't worry. Get in our rental car. We'll we'll take you to Rhoda. So we went to Rhoda, checked in. And we checked in like the front gate. And they were like, oh, you need to go to the pier. <laughs> Holy crap. That was a hell of a walk from like front gate to the pier. Oh, yeah. Shit. And wait, 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 wait. Hold I'm on. carrying... Uh, okay. I, I, I may have missed something here. So, yeah, for some reason the, he flew commercial. I flew you got, a Mack you got, flight out of Norfolk. They, 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 they just dropped you, him off at the gate there. You yeah. know, who dropped you off at the gate? These National Guard members. Did they know who of, you were? They're not National Guard. They were part of the, part of the Navy Reserve. So, the, 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 did they? Was that part of their job, or was it just like random people you saw and they were like, "Hey, do you want to walk I met on the flight and from?" Uh, so I flew from uh, Norfolk to. Uh, JFK, JFK to the Madrid, and then Madrid to Juarez Frontas. And I met them on the flight from JFK to uh, Madrid. Madrid. Um, and then the ship didn't have like someone meeting you at the, nope. at the and you had no That's idea what weird. the fuck you were going to do? Nope. <laughs> oh, shit. That's so weird, man. Shut up. I don't know if I believe this because I think if it was me, I would just, I'd still be in that airport. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember, I, like, I, I gotta just, get to there. So, I just moved when in. I left, like they pulled the brow as, as soon as I stepped off the ship. <laughs> I had like a day and a half to wait in fucking Sicily before my flight home. So, I, uh, okay, all right. Yeah, so they kind of hoping for the best <laughs> with limited yeah. knowledge. All right. Uh, I mean, I do. If you promise that's what's happened, I, I believe you. That's exactly <laughs> because... what. <I'm> <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. It just seems like you know I would hear about a lot of people that just like randomly like don't show up places. Going, you know, going from like the different holes, <laughs> so crazy schools and all that stuff, and then going to the ship. And I was like, holy shit, what kind of shit show am I going to? Yeah. Okay. And I was that like, well, sense. I'm gonna do the best I can to get to the US dust USS Donald Cook. I know they're at the Navy ship, you know, the Navy base in Rhoda. I'm gonna follow these random people that I met that are hopefully Navy reserves. <laughs> they're fucking like, weird terrorists that like you know. Me know I mean, sure. eventually in your career, you take a a, a path that put, puts you on the uh, direction of being you know a little bit more, I guess, cautious in these types of situations. No, I don't I'm, know if I would just I trust somebody. I'm just getting the car with them. No, I just got yeah. in the car. I was. This dumb. is like. Beginning cool. of the war, you're like on one side I can get to the ship. On the other side, I could be in a beheaded beheading video. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> get those were uh, those were right, the two so, legit possibilities. <laughs> all right, I just want to make, I just wanted to make sure that 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 part wasn't glossed over because it seemed like it really was, and nobody really. And I I thought I might have missed something in that story, but no. So you you ride with these total strangers, um, terrorists, possibly Russians, definitely. Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> Navy reservists. Yeah. Oh, oh Navy reservists. They, they, right, they were so, like uh, they were like a uh, married couple. All I want to say for some reason, married couple like comes to mind. I mean, this was like over twenty years ago at this point. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's like it's okay, pretty crazy. Know, it's pretty crazy. Guys, the ship you know? didn't even give you a fucking guy with a sign. <laughs> Aston. <laughs> This was all we tracked on our phones and everything and see where we're at. And we're like, we're still in the Mac Quest days. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, this is like, you have to like look at signs. You have to be aware of shit going on around you. Your phone Crazy. will not get you out of a jam no. in and, 2001. You know, you know, I'm from rural <laughs> Georgia. Who's going to read Spanish in actual Spanish? Yeah. I don't even know what's, yeah. I have no idea. Um, so, I, I can barely understand your English now. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, the only thing I learned how to say in Spain, the the first thing I learned how to say was cafe con leche. I was like, I just need a coffee. I was like, that's, I think that's what coffee means. <laughs> Did uh, you fly in uniform? No. Okay. No, they told us not to. So, Interesting. You know, I, I think that was more of a pain in the ass. Cause so he wore his American flag cowboy hat, his American flag <laughs> boots, and his American flag butt down <laughs> shirt, and his, <laughs> and his pistol. And his Wranglers, and his uh, <laughs> hubcap belt buckle. And he hopped on a plane and said, take me to danger. <laughs> <laughs> we know the place. Toby Keith for. tells me where to go in my mind. <laughs> I'm looking for Toby Keith, and they, they got you on a plane and took you. He went that way. 
<laughs> Where's Jerry Lawler and Toby Keith right now? <laughs> uh, so, uh, all right, man. So you get to the ship and it's pretty cool and you see Andy and you check on board. Um, <laughs> well, what was your first impression of like going to like CF division, I guess? Um, that, that That's the, the, the division that Aegis Techs are in, the CF division. Um, what was your first impressions there? I mean, I guess you were coming in there and you were a young buck and everybody else was grizzled old veterans at this point. Honestly, I had no idea what, what going in the CF was like. Um, you know, you check into the ship. I instantly made friends with, uh, uh, what was his name? He <laughs> you were you good friends. Uh, he, was, he was like, man. You know, it honestly put me on the spot right now. It's got me forgetting his name. But he just recently passed away from, uh, he was a yeoman. Is a, he made chief right before he passed away? And oh, uh, Lopez. Lopez, that's it. Oh yeah, yeah. So him and I made really good friends, and you know we ended up playing soccer on the ship together. But um, the yeoman, since, since it was yeah, the yeah. first or night, was he in? Uh, well, why, 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 what? John Lopez. I, I, yeah, yeah I know, I know who he is. I can, I, I see yeah. him in my head. Why him? Um, I guess I, mean, I don't mean I don't mean like that. I mean like no, it, why it was, like uh, why 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 a yeoman and not like you know on on the ship like you know Gibbs or Shortridge or oh they were Blake. all at the bar already because they had put in port they were already gone. Mm. Oh okay 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 I, I understand where where we're yeah, so I, I was checking in and everybody's leaving you know yeah so they're like oh down there's your space and I was like I don't know how to get in there there's a little thingy up there that I'm supposed to push buttons on. One, two, three, four. Is he gone? He'll be back. And he was like, okay, now get get out. You know, we're going to the bar. Like, All right. So we went to the bar. Um, and am I still stable? Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. going now. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're back. You're good. All right. All right, good. Um, so that must have been a Tourette's moment for the internet. Um, I imagine hours. your Georgia internet is like a goat turning a gender. Hey, I gotta keep. <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, checking in was was fun. That's why I made I made friends with Lopez and and Kelly and all those guys right off the bat because you know they're not getting off the boat anytime soon. FCs are leaving the boat first, <laughs> especially after you know having amazing line handlers. <laughs> Settle down, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I was not there, but I'm sure the ship was not that secure. I, 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 Gibbs was running line handlers at the time. Yeah, Gibbs was yeah the line. He was, all right, was, was yeah. run pretty. Gibbs and Drew tight. then me then. Yeah, I was the number one, so I think we were pretty fucking secure. Drew yeah. <laughs> stamp approval. Um, but yeah, so end up meeting with Annie, and he's like, "Oh, let's go. We're following somebody." And I was like, "I had no idea who we were following." I mean. I'm still like in shock and awe. I don't even hardly remember the moment. Yeah. Um, I can remember getting to the very first bar Andy and I sat down at, and it was just me and Andy, and I'd met nobody. And I know the bar is just full of, you know, Donald Cook sailors, basically. You yeah. guys had just gotten through like changing an engine or whatnot, uh, in some other port. And we get there and I was like, Andy, let's celebrate. You know, this is my first night. I know you've been here a couple of nights, and I was like, let's uh Let's let's get a special drink. And we were already drinking beer. Yeah, because I don't I think the first night I didn't even I didn't even leave the boat the boat. Like I just like I got on board, like everybody else went out and I was like, I just want to get my bearings, I guess. Yeah, right. You know. But yeah, it was like the first night both of us went out on Liberty. And I think that's when we, we got the the dead lizard. Yeah. So oh. that was uh I remember talking to the the bartender and I was like, what's your oldest? Because I think one of the country songs that uh, we had listened or listening to at the time were about, you know, something in the song was about, you know, dust on the bottle. And I was like, what's your dustiest bottle? Oh, what's cool. The dustiest thing you got up there. And she brought down this clear bottle with a red label, label and white letters. And then she set it down in front of us. And when you like zoomed in and focused on what was in the bottle, <clears throat> There was two dead, was it gutted lizards inside of it? Something weird like that, yeah. Instead of like yeah. the tequila worm, had dead like, lizards in it. I was like, 
I was like, I done screwed up now. I might as well do two shots. Yeah. Mm. And mm. Uh, I was like, line them up. And uh, took the shot. I was like, I screwed up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like we're, but now we got a story <laughs> we're, we're, we're holding on to it and then it wasn't like five minutes after that shot that you were like oh here's ramirez and and you know everybody Damn else man. and you know heart yeah. comes in and you know it's like i have no idea who these people are but y'all want a shot too and i was like line more shots up whatever that was oh my and, god and oh. i had another like shot, I remember, CF doing shots yeah, yeah it was, that was that was a rough shot. You man. would think the story would go around dead lizard shots. What did it taste like? Dead lizards. Okay, <laughs> that's what <laughs> I imagine. It was, like. it was absolutely terrible. Yeah. Um, but it was almost. I, I think I had a, uh, a coworker that we, you know, you and I share, uh, Adam uh, Brent. I think he called it habusaki. Mm. And it must have been like the white trash version of habusaki because what what um, what Brent suggests is sounds a lot more fancier and ours had instead of snakes it had gutted lizards in it so <laughs> uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna go with uh we had the white trash version <laughs> gutted lizards. it's pretty <laughs> awesome though so yeah that was like one of my first nights on the show i was going out the road and hanging mm -hmm. out with andy and, and and checking in with harvey it, it was it was a that was a good time and you and cole you and uh, josh were already there yeah. We're going to take oh. another uh, Sea Stories head call. Old man bladder. Yep. So go for it. Um, But Andy, you did uh mention Drew's shirt. I did. Hell yeah. Uh, We have merch. And uh, what we're trying to do with our merch is like uh, do some like deep Navy cuts, especially if you were in the Navy in the 2000s, maybe possibly even served in Norfolk, Virginia, uh, the, the shirt uh, Drew and Joe are wearing is our Sea Stories. Uh, pizza and beer are available at the end of the pier t-shirt. Um, hold on, I got, I got the back ready. Yeah, you don't want to see my back. <laughs> Not even wearing pants, so that's weird. Uh, pizza and beer available at the end of the pier if you're in norfolk in the mid 2000s then you heard that announcement every single day especially if you were on duty um so that's what we're trying to do with our designs uh, we have a, for the donald cook sailors out there we have an i heart dck t-shirt and i just launched a new uh tom hot tua tama hot tama hot tua t-shirt <laughs> And, uh, you know, we're in the Navy, we know about spitting, and we spit missiles downrange. So that's what we do. Uh, if you don't see the link in the show notes, uh, reach out to us on our socials. I'll get you a link to the merchandise. It's really cool, uh, unique Navy gear that you don't see very often. Um, with that being said, uh, we now return to our regularly scheduled program. Joe, do you got anything else? Uh, yeah, just, uh, trying to, uh, just trying to, you know, get it back on track here. Uh, so ship life isn't so bad, right? That's you kind know, of a question and also a statement at the same time, like, you know, where I hope that you then like kind of roll into that, like, like, give us your insight about the food, bro. Uh, well, you know, like like I said, coming coming from the farm, you know, my dad, you know, the men in my family are cooks. Um, and then, you know, my dad always made good food. And then going from the Navy, it was debatable. But I still get into weight. Um, uh, the ship. I, I actually, you know, I enjoyed the ship up to a, cert, a, a certain point. I probably could have, you know, just been just shipborne in general just leave me alone on the ship let me do my thing just for the rest of my life i was okay with that and it wasn't until a certain chief got there that i was like i really hate this place it <laughs> me out immediately and um i was like that's where i've got you know I, I hated leaving cf division but it was because of that chief i was like i gotta get the fuck out of here i gotta go somewhere else and um you know luckily you know at that time you know they were like oh let's put all these you know messed up sailors in wx division nobody knows how to deal with them they're good sailors but you know they have 
behavioral problem. So, uh, can you explain WX division for the non Navy type? Uh, WX was uh, weapons expeditionary, and it was <laughs> That's fairly, so yeah, fairly new uh, division. I mean, this was a couple years later. What, like two years after our first deployment, Andy? That yeah, you know, chief yeah, showed up. Through, yeah, through like, like RDC stuff. I mean, like art, like no, it was just dumb stuff. Oh, yeah, like paint Caesar too. <laughs> I need you to paint Caesar too. Like. <laughs> I just go get a gallon of paint, dump it, and dump it in the angle iron, and like just <laughs> spread it around. Just we had spread to it around in the same hands. angle iron. Dude, that was the best way to do it. That was the best. Absolutely. Just push, was... push the paint. Like <laughs> it was so satisfying too. It was, it's I, re- I remember one time did, therapy. I, did just about just to, to piggyback off this paint thought I just had, and I, <laughs> I, I think about this about once every two years during. Uh, uh, what was that? That big, uh, that big inspection we had. Inserve, inserve. For some reason, like they, the powers that be were like Joe and Aston are on knee knocker duty, or some fucking something ridiculous like that. And it was like, <laughs> wait, wait, what? And it was to make sure that like the knee knockers were painted in like the, like the black. the, the by, by the book, like with the uh, Rome, basically. Well, the chrome and then like the amount of black that was supposed to be on it uh, yep. versus the where the door turns gray. Uh, that can one, you? That one chief, or no, that one captain, he wanted uh, the shiniest knee knockers ever. And then Inserve came on and was like, no, they have to be black. <laughs> we, we had All taken that. I did for we, months. We, we, we like sanded those things down with a, like a Dremel tool and got these things like blinged out they were the shiny it was the shiniest piece of steel you ever seen and then chuck brought on fucking spray paint uh top coat which you can't use spray paint on the ship at all it'll fucking kill people because i mean it's going through the fucking <laughs> vent systems and shit oh, we wow. closed off all the vents in the fucking everything we set dog zebra on that ass like everything was shut down and we fucking zebra <laughs> Yeah. Spray paint all these fucking things. We got like we got it taped off, and we do it up in a. We did it in the in the ladder way for sure between uh, combat and like the bridge or not combat and the bridge. I'm sorry, spy, uh, the spy radar room and the bridge. We definitely did it there, and cl- it closed everything off. And then like, just basically like you know, fucking like a bunch of high school stoners. Like, <laughs> it's it out the window. Don't my mom to smell it. You it's like hot box to you know, the <laughs> pee way. And, <laughs> and dude, I mean, they looked fucking great. They were amazing. They looked great. And yeah, we're, we're trying to talk. we're trying to expand our audience. Can you explain knee knockers? Oh, uh, all the doors in the navy are like what a foot and a half, Oval shape, two feet off the ground. Like the doorway ways you walk through. Like, like you like have to a, step into the doorway. Step way. into them. And it's all for like watertight integrity. Uh, I guess a room can fill with like 200 gallons of water before it spills into the next room. I don't know what the exact number is, but it's, I mean, they're, they're fairly high. And if you're, if you're shuffling your feet, like a lazy person, your shins are going to get trashed. So you have to kind of walk with like some high knees when you're going through doorways. Every, every time you go to a different, uh, a, a different area or a different room, you have to go through a little person, a uh, hurdle. Yeah. Like a sweet airline. It should be like shin knockers than knee knockers, but yeah, yeah, I would say that. Doesn't sound as good. Yeah. No, no. Right. It doesn't roll off the tongue. The, the yeah. double K ends knee, knee <laughs> knocker. That that's what um that's what got Q that one time when he fell through uh Burthen and cut his I remember leg. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was. I mean, it wasn't a knee knocker, but it was still like a knife edge that got you know came got him. Yeah, he fell through a hatch. Yeah, Yeah. Mm. I remember that. Mm. Um, I wasn't that thing labeled. Uh, Anyway, um, so your least favorite meal and your favorite meal, just real quick, and then I think I'm done with this whole. Least favorite meal and favorite meal from a guy that who's known for cooking. I, I don't I don't have a least favorite. Oh, wait a second. Favorite oh. meal. Second deployment when Outback sent us all those steaks. 
You guys remember that? <laughs> that doesn't yeah. count. I remember because Chief Blodgett had us doing a bunch of bullshit ass work, and by the time we got over <laughs> to the Outback thing, they were all fucking gone. Yep. <laughs> since you were already at WX, you got yep the proper. I, I moved the CSs aside. I was like, no, don't touch my steak. I'll cook it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. That was yeah, exactly. Uh, because when we got there, they were gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Just some true, this is a true story. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to question Andy's memory. That's for yeah, you can't. That's for <laughs> damn Andy, sure. I'm not doing that. Andy will yeah, check me fucking real quick. Ask He's got Andy receipts. Pulling that integrity down. Stick with Andy. Yeah. <laughs> the the other the other favorite meal was uh, so you know I did my uh, my cranking duty, but I did it up in the wardroom. Yeah. yeah. And I remember working one of the first uh, unwraps where, you know, like stuff is coming or like pallets instead of fuel coming across. The wardroom got like five of those like three gallon jugs of Baskin Robbins ice cream. <laughs> I must have ate like four bowls of that stuff. Oh my God. I was sitting up in the wardroom uh, galley. And that was probably my favorite meal on the ship besides the Outback steak. I don't really have a least favorite meal because other than that, it was all just shit. No like favorite. as much as you love your your shipmates, your brothers and something, there's some fucking Hunger Games shit going on when something good comes across. Yeah. You know? It is. It is, it is like, you, like, it's like everyone. Somebody's throat for a fucking mounds or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. However... Uh, I remember some. I remember a time that uh, one of those uh, uh, what were they? They weren't gunners' mates, but they hung out in uh, the aft uh, sonar gun tech. mount. No, they, uh, they were those camera tech things or whatever the fuck they were. I don't know oh, what the hell those. Done. But there was like McGregor was one of them, and I can't remember what kind of. Oh, it was uh, Mark One Hundred and Sixty. Yeah, was that yeah. what it was? Yeah, <clears throat> and a, a certain one of those dudes, we were fucking doing a. a Un, or uh, uh, getting, getting supplies, yeah. and I pass across the way to him in our human chain, Slim Jims, and he just fucking throws them straight behind him, and they land on Mount on Mount Twenty Two in the back, <laughs> and, and and we just keep moving. And then after the after the <laughs> went up there, and he had like I mean it was like uh, it was like a it was one hundred and forty four, like a gross of fucking Slim Jims, and. <clears throat> Dude, we ate the absolute shit out of them <laughs> for, we, for like two weeks, <laughs> for seven days, for seven days. <laughs> we just ate slim jims. <laughs> we had the we had the, the for CSs. seven meals. <laughs> <laughs> Put them in our omelets. <laughs> People didn't know we were in the navy. They think we were being imprisoned. <laughs> so like prison stories. Yeah, I mean, was like when the box came across, it would say "not fit for human consumption." <laughs> You're like, oh, dinner's gonna be good tonight. Oh man, yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, that yeah, I mean, if something it, when something was popular on the ship, I mean, it became like. Yeah, it was like a Hunger Games situation, man. You killed <laughs> over that shit. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to rapid fire some questions, Chuck. I want to start off with, uh, I just want to know about your, describe your experience the first time going out to sea, like the boat is floating in the ocean. Uh, it wasn't much of an experience. I was, I was, uh, that's between, unfortunate. <laughs> I was sitting between RD 358s. Trying to learn how to change the tape and puke in a five-gallon bucket. Okay, you're you're not. So you never got over your seasickness. No, well, I mean, I was good till about twelve foot seas. Okay. And then, you know, I mean, twelve foot seas after that's that. That's pretty decent. Yeah, it was decent, and then you know, no, we three foot seas. No, outside. I don't think you were even that good. Oh, uh, was he known oh, as a? But uh, he got he got queasy pretty quickly. Okay. I'm not well, gonna. I mean, I didn't want to stand anymore. And watch Joe. My, <laughs> you say I that. You, my my favorite day, one of my favorite days on the boat, because I didn't get seasick very often, was uh when the new guys watching the new guys at in in the mess decks on chili dog night, out in the ocean, yeah. because you could eat all the chili dogs you want if you didn't get seasick while everybody was <laughs> hugging their trays. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was like, um, was it one of our first underways after the yards at MHI? And like the seas were rough. And like Chief Kent was all like busting everybody's balls. That made like a fucking pepperoni sandwich or some shit. <laughs> he was talking trash for like an hour or so and then he had to dip off and yak because all that <laughs> grease caught up to him <laughs> I mean, um, there was a couple but of definitely worth it if you're a so crazy dog. that like eight, eight people would be on the mess decks at like rush hour at lunch <laughs> like <laughs> I mean coming out of Portugal in that 2005 to, well, two, yeah 2005 2006 deployment was yeah, that was rough. That too. was rough. Yeah. I, I had like I had emergency microwavable Uncle Ben's rice packets in my rack. Mm-hmm. And I would I would lay in my emergency. rack put them between my legs and I would let my, my body heat warm them up. And then I would tear them open, eat them, and then go right back to sleep. Oh my god. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> you, let your, you let your gooch heat. Yeah. <laughs> your rice. Um <laughs> Still better than an MRE. <laughs> right. All right. Rapid fire. Put rapid that fire. On t-shirt. Put that on t-shirt. <laughs> right. Two <Gucci. Gucci. laughs> uh, Rapid fire. Uh, what were some of your favorite ports? Uh, Rhodes. I had a really good time getting kicked out of the International F- Seafair Center in Dubai. Uh, let's see. Rhodes, Dubai. Had a good time in Rota, Portugal, not so much. Naples was an okay. Yeah, I, I, I would say Rhodes and Dubai were probably my two favorites. Um, did you have any like deployment souvenirs? I've got a hookah. The hookah. Oh, oh, yeah. we were talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 my main go-to. It's sitting set up in the garage right now. Um. You know, here on Sea Stories, we like our, our movies and film. I know you're the big movie guy, so, so I've heard. Um, is there a film that reminds you of deployment? Like something that you watched all the time or you, you saw it was on Birthing Lounge and you had to stop and watch? So we can probably all remember, you know, we there was, there was like three main movies that, you know, like encompassed deployments. Batman Begins, Office Space, and then Team America. <laughs> and every time I think every time those three movies come up, I, I think of just being on deployment. You know, Batman was always sometime during the week. Off at office space was, you know, usually what Sundays or, or Wednesdays. And then Team America World Police was like the night before we pulled in. Yeah, those are yeah. Uh, I don't remember you said Batman? Yeah, Batman. Psychological. Yeah, I don't remember Batman so much, but the other two for sure. I remember watching Batman Begins. I think we. I remember uh, the first time I watched it was on deployment because you called down to a um, after I see or whatever to have them put it on like Thanksgiving or something. Yeah, or one of them underways or something. I mean, I, I think I think I had about four hundred DVDs on deployment with me, and that's how I got my ESWAS badge. I do remember <laughs> you having a shit ton of DVDs. I mean, I, I think I had my ESWAS qualifications signed off in like 24 hours because uh, Scotty Too Hotty, he was like, let's see if you can get it done before, you know, the end of Yorktown. And, and um, I was like, okay, well, you know, like I saw called in a couple, you know, movie favors that were inside the different slots of the different movies uh, that I had. Yeah. Yeah, you got yours before the end of that deployment? Do what? <clears throat> You got that ESWAS before the end of that deployment? Yeah, I got it. I got my ESWAS in 24 hours. I got my, my whole like <laughs> paper signed off, uh, chief's interview and test all done within 24 hours. Nice, That's wow. Dude. Did you get did you get pinned the same time Drew and I got pinned? Yeah. Are we in the same ceremony? Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir. That's, nice, dude. I thought That's I did it <clears throat> So it's like Andrew you know, took out, we took a full six months, people. dude. What? Drew and I took the full six months. I did we mine. Started... I did mine in two months. I thought I did it fast. Yeah, mine was quick, man. Uh, if it wasn't for storing, man, I probably wouldn't have got it done as fast as I did. He had all the cheat sheet notes and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, that dude. The sloth himself, man. He everything. 
he had the go to. Mm-hmm. That's um, a long route. I got halfway done in four and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully this doesn't put you on the spot, but uh, we have a official podcast playlist on Spotify where we ask our interviewees three songs that remind them of the navy and then we throw them on the playlist it's a good listen i recommend everybody check it out are there three songs that remind you of your time in the navy oh my jesus uh you know toby keith songs are always going to be you know one of those that that come to mind and i i'm a metal head and i just hate to say that um you know, the other one is absolutely terrifying. It's who let the dogs out. Yep. <laughs> yes. So, That's a Donald Cook staple. Yep. Uh, you know, hate, it, I, yeah. Embarrassing a little. It's absolutely embarrassing. And then um, for some reason, it's like when I remember walking into Caesar three occasionally, and there was uh, a couple individuals that were like blaring, you know, their break dance music. Um, couple of them was, was like rehab and, and things like that and that those like instantly come to mind like walking into Caesar three for quarters and it's like you see individuals break dancing and uh, it was always pretty damn funny <laughs> but you know artists artists in general I mean it was like you know nobody hated Nickelback back then and then you know it was, it was like 2007 it was like everybody hated Nickelback something happened and uh but I can remember a lot of Nickelback songs going on. I feel like everybody likes them again now. Some people don't remember them, I think, maybe. And uh, uh, yeah. this last question was uh, Andy brought up one time, and I fucking love this question. Uh, what was the real Navy? You spent six years in the Navy, and people always talking about, oh, this isn't the Navy, or that's not the Navy. What was the Navy to you? Man, I, I, you know, if I could have just stayed on the cook doing the VBSS thing and the WX thing, I would, I would have been happy. I mean, I actually, I left the Navy and actually became a cop for a little while, and that didn't work out because, I, you know, I, I, I guess we're just different in the Navy. You know, we're not, we're not serious, but we're all, you know, and that's why it, you know, didn't work out as a cop, but um. Yeah, if I, you know, I love Dahlgren. If I could have stayed all 20 years there, but then I got <laughs> up and I was like, you know what? This isn't too bad. You know, if I get to the right spot, I think, I think Chief Fig killed me in, in CF division, uh, trying to paint Caesar two. Uh, <laughs> WX, I was like, I could, I could do 20 years here. Uh, no matter of fact, I'm really good friends. I probably talk to uh, Mike McCombs like once a week. Oh, oh Gunny Stash himself. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> uh yeah if, if i could have just stayed in wx staying on the same ship with definitely the same crew that we had in 0305 deployment that's yeah i mean i I'd, honestly you know if we'd had a good command and good leadership i don't think any of us would have left or any of you know any of us would have left you know just we probably would have all re-enlisted we've all yeah, said that before JJ that like and all of us we all would if, if we all could just stay on the same ship yeah and like with the same people for like 20 years they said that's what you get to do now but like yeah, fuck it, man. Whatever. Right. Yeah. I'll I stay on board, man. Fuck man. it. Let's see what happens. Let's there wasn't much out. drama. There wasn't much drama. We all had a good time. It was like, you know, we'll all have a beer with each other. So, you know. What's the one thing that you missed that you didn't think you would about being in? Be honest, the racks. Yeah. <clears throat> I sleep like a baby, you know, growing up, you know, kind of showing horses and sleeping in the floorboard of a truck and all that stuff, going to different horse shows as a kid and then joining the Navy and being in Iraq. I was like, damn, I can't get any better than this. Like, yeah. you know, so right now, right now, I've got like an 80 pound pit bull that sleeps next to me. <laughs> and that's, um, that's probably the closest I've, I've got to being in Iraq. Yeah. It's like I got my little wall. Yeah. Very, very womb like in a middle rack. I, I, well, yeah, man, I had mine, the roof of mine painted black until like two weeks before I got out and the XO caught me. Yeah, get that thing, get all in there snug as a, ooh, man. I had my DVD player all Velcroed in the top. I had 
Oh, oh. black all on the inside. I had that bottom rack. Uh, are you guys ready for some beer reviews? Yeah. Uh, I'll kick it off once again. I'm drinking from Stone Brewery, the Buena Besa um, Salt and Lime Lager. Lager. Um, when I think about salt and lime infused beer, my go-to is a Dogfish Head Sea Quencher, I believe. I think they nailed that yeah, type of beer. Um, this one, I don't really taste the salt as much as I want to. It's still a good beer. Um, I don't think I'm drinking it at the correct temperature. I want it to be more colder than it is, if, if that makes sense. It's kind of warm here in Washington State today. But other than that, it's a solid beer. I could definitely see myself drinking it again. I could definitely uh, see myself introducing it to you guys. Like, hey, try this beer out. And I think everybody would have a good time. So with that being said, um, 4.7% 4 4 ABV. Um, I'm giving it like a good 3.75. I think that's a good rating for this beer. Um, Andy, why don't you remind everybody what you're drinking and give us your rate. I got the Armed Forces Brewing uh, Cat Shop American Lager. Um, you know, it's 5.5% uh, ABV. Uh, you know, Liberty deserves a great beer. Here it says uh, aircraft carrier. Flight deck is, of course, uh, four and a half acres of sovereign territory, 100,000 tons of diplomacy, <laughs> and a uh, mighty piece of real estate, uh, ready to steam to uh, trouble spots and around the globe all, at all times. Um, and this beer is just kind of a tribute uh, to the air wings personnel uh, across the fleet, uh, thousands of men and women, sailors, uh, most effective platform in the history of the Continental Warfare here. Uh, yeah, it's it's. I gave it a 3.5. I think it's a good beer. It's, it's crushable. Um, it's got a defined flavor, but it, you know, it's nothing's too strong or overpowering. Um, yeah, it's good. I like it, man. Uh, this is like my third one tonight. I had, you know, one earlier, one with dinner, finishing this third one. Yeah, three and a half. Drew, what were you drinking? Yeah, so I was drinking uh, the 1300 mile uh, brewing lager. Uh, this is made in um, what's called the Brew Hub in Lakeland. It's kind of a um, a community brewing uh, um, hub, I guess. So they brew multiple types of beers out of there. <clears throat> um, this one's really solid. It's uh, pretty standard for a lager. Uh, it, it's named after the 1300 miles of, uh, of coast of Florida. So this is a Florida beer, um, which of course I love. Uh, I think it would be great to take, you know, to the beach, to a pool party. It's again, cool. It's Florida. Uh, but it's not like a flashy, well-known beer. Um, I, I'm going to give it a three. I'm going to give it a three. Three. Yeah. Joe, what's up, man? Tell us what you got. What's your rating? All right, dudes, I'm drinking the KC Beer Hellas Lager. <laughs> Munich-style golden lager. And uh, <clears throat> uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good, man. And I don't know if this is a real thing or not, that this really matters or whatever, but it says, like, it's naturally carbonated. Is that, is that, is that a big deal in the beer world? Yeah, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty big deal, man. His, shaking his skull and uh it says it's using only water yeast and imported molten hops no so, shit no no shit. no no shit dude <laughs> uh it's 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 very low abv you know you know where i like to hang out boys 5.1 mm -hmm. i like to drink about a dozen before i get weird um <laughs> uh no uh but but man the beer beer is really good dude um it's pretty pretty light pretty nice pretty good pretty delicious uh it's got the you know it's the multi kind of stuff going on and 
a little bit of honey action happening. It's kind of sweet. Um, we do these by fives, right? Yeah, out of five quarters, kids. quarter. Yeah, let's do. Uh, oh yeah, up to. Let's five. do four and a half. Four and a half. It's oh, good. Damn. It's a good beer. It's it's it, it's 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 really good, man. It's like I said, it's pretty light. It's you know, it's not. It's not high alcohol or anything, man. So you can just kind of like chill out and drink. I think they're I think they're a lot better really cold, but I think that goes for saying with a lot of beers. So I mentioned uh, the temperature of the beer, and I think what I meant is like I want to pull it out of a ice chest and not out of a refrigerator. You know, I think that's yeah. what I'm talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. There's a brewery right by my house that uh, like the beers. I don't think the beers are very good. And I also don't think, I think they would be, I just think they would be better if they were like really cold instead of like the temperature they are. The beers just aren't very good anyway. (laughs) But if if they were like, like eight degrees colder, I think that that I would be like, oh yeah, it's a pretty nice brewery, man. Sweet. Uh, Josh, go for it, dude. All right, man. I'm doing the Corona Extra. The Um, Vin Diesel beer. My head, my head, my head. Mexican lager. Uh, well, if you haven't had Corona Extra, you need to try it. <laughs> uh, it's good. You know, I love an IPA, but you know what? It's summertime. I can't drink an IPA and mow the lawn. You know, you just can't do that. Like, I just can't drink a 7 8% beer and try to mow the lawn. There's Corona Extras, like four and a half percent. That's like a water break, man. (laughs) You know? It's perfect. Especially put a little bit of lime and salt on there. Shoot. You're like transported to Mexico. You think you're over there in... With Andy Dufresne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are are you in a club in Eastern Europe? (laughs) (laughs) Well, BCM. (laughs) <laughs> Cole's gone to Cozumel <laughs> right there you go <laughs> that was a Cozumel club the Yucan- Yucatan Peninsula <laughs> <laughs> anyways oh, man. listen here I haven't seen you guys in such a long time <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going a- you know, out of five, I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a three point two five. Can I do that? Is that is that acceptable score? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I have a I have a personal role where like the Budweisers, the Corona, you know, the the main breweries. I don't right. give anything above a three point zero, but oh. and I don't give them anything less than a three point zero. <laughs> That's a personal role, though. Right. And uh, Chuck. Right. Well, Chuck, yeah, you're up next, man. Man, so to be honest with you, man, I'm I'm drinking the New Realm Brewing Company uh, Blackberry Smoke. And I love this beer. I, I've, I've drank it plenty of times. Um, you know, it, it's sitting right at, at mid fours. I, I enjoy the shit out of it. Oh, uh, I, I've honestly I've, I've got a stack of them sitting right there. I got like four or five beers sitting next to me, plus a uh, Miller High Life. So uh, this, the, you know, if I can get it at a decent price at the store, I'm, I'm drinking this over my Miller High Life, and it's it's one of my main go tos for when I'm brewing it here at the house. It's just an enjoyable beer. Um, I can't ask for much. You know, it's just a simple, simple, well, well executed lager. So. I'm I'm really happy with it. I love the label as well. So yeah, them cool. and uh, between the Blackberry Smoke, the tour tour bus, you know, Adam, I, I love the label that you got on yours. Yeah, it's love a sick label. Your fridge. So just uh, just overall, uh, you know, good beer in general. Can't ask can't ask for much more. Did you give it a value? I, I didn't catch it. Oh Jesus! Uh, Out of five and quarter. Of course. Uh, before or after hookah, before we started all this. Oh. Uh, Dealer's choice. <laughs> uh, 
it, it, it's a solid four and a half half for me it's one of my it's one of my happy place beers cool not mad at that uh i felt like it went pretty smooth for not doing this in two months uh thank you again chuck yeah, you good. know i see chuck all the time it seems now these days at least twice a year <laughs> and it took you this long to get him on the podcast um, uh, I was saving that man. You know we got we got yeah. we got uh people lined up just just yeah, okay. to jump on the show. You gotta have a cue. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um no, uh thanks again, Chuck. Uh it's a pleasure um sitting down with you and the rest of you guys. It's been a while since we got it. Um uh, we're not going anywhere. We just took a a, a little hiatus, but uh yeah uh thanks for sticking with us thanks for listening uh do you guys got anything else any last minutes tune in next time say good night everybody good night